Uh, I like that. <laughs> I used pretty, to be. I, I didn't chill out a lot, so I'm not the same like that. That's okay. Really. You still got pretty, it. Uh, yeah. Legendary, actually. <laughs> I like like I like fucking legendary people. Okay. All right. Well, okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put this video real quick. Hold up. Okay. What's up? It's Wednesday night. Sitting here with DJ Motion, Sean. How are you doing, man? What's what's I'm good, bro. I see I'm you. Good. You got the Joe Lewis in the back. Oh, yeah, you, you know, you gotta. You always gotta represent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Represent. You, you can always flash old English D. So oh, you know, I try to man. do it in different ways to let you know. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Everywhere you go. So Everywhere I go. I play you this. You see it behind me. Same. You I want to see it behind me. I see it. I see it up there in that corner. <laughs> when, when you're from Detroit and people ask you where you're from, you you, you love to tell them you're from Detroit. Oh, I know I do. No. You get a you different, you get a whole different kind of respect when you when you drop that D. Word. Most of the time, they don't even have to ask me. I got something that's going to display it. I, I you yeah. know, I'll be down like. Uh, <laughs> right. I remember I used to like I used to drive down. My parents live in Memphis. I used to drive down to Memphis. You know, I had the old English D in the back of the window, the sticker, and wow. I get pulled over at the lights. People rolling up to me because there's a lot of people in the D. Well, there's a lot of us everywhere, so they would right. pull up on me, yeah. roll up on me, man. Like, what up? I'm from Detroit too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, yeah. Always. It's a badge of honor. It's a badge of yeah. honor. Yeah. No matter where you go. So. Absolutely. So, uh, Sean, I wanted to play this because uh, you know I was able to find this online because I was looking for like some YouTube's and stuff like that, but I sent right. it to the, to the people on the on the show, the co-host, but I wanted to play this real quick because uh, uh, this takes you back to, it looks like 90, 97. Oh, man. I'll, I'll, I'm going to play FM not against the Lugan JLB. Tams is drunk. It's drunk, Tams. You know you get a win. What do you get from here at 298, 70, 98? Get Frankie. I got one. You know you get a win. I ain't hurt you. You know you get a win. Damn, bro. you really like that one, don't you? I think that shit don't make no goddamn sense. Thank you, who is that? This is I was crazy, man. I I'm was, laughing out of respect. That's how you did right. it. Right. Borderline yeah. comedian, man. Right, man. I always, it used to take me hours. Just to come, I couldn't start any type of mixtape without some type of skit. So it would right. take me hours just to come up with skits because I would have to have a skit before That's I could even start, dope. man. Yeah. And so I, I was, I was, Yeah. Uh, so were you yeah. able, on that call, were you able to call into WJLB? No, I edited it all that, dude. I edited, I, I edited, edited. I did it on the four track and edited it. And then uh, <laughs> no I shit. always, always play this character. Uh, I had two characters: DJ Wannabe, and then the <laughs> other one, <was> Uncle <laughs> Willie. So I had, you know, I would, okay. I would slow the pitch down. So I was like, "Hey, boy!" And I was and, just and, and and playing back at normal to sound not, like not, not drunk to cut you yeah, off. yeah, not to cut you off. But did did yeah. you ever mention the Uncle Willie on one of your mixtapes? Or yeah, no? on several. Oh, Uncle okay, Willie was on okay, several. Okay. Of, uh, I'm just, yeah. I'm just trying to remember. Okay. okay. Yeah, I put I put him. I use that I character remember. on on several man. I don't right. know. I remember. Like I, say, it, I was just trying to. It's been a while. So. Yeah, yeah. I was just you know. You got one of your fans gone. up there, and and I have it. <laughs> if it if it ain't gold, blue leg, then the blue you know, leg, right, so. right, man. You know, like I said, that that took off too, man. But uh, back to the whole Frankie thing, dude. That was a trip too. I just did that on the wheel, man. I was driving home one day, and you know, used to have that that little skit going. You know, you, you ghetto or whatever. Right. And I got the idea oh, to do it. I used to be rolling yeah. when that skit would come right. on. Right. Oh, and I, I got the idea cat. to do oh, it, man. It, 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 
I didn't think nothing of it until I got a call from her. <laughs> That's she's, damn, she's great too. She's I know yeah. she was rolling too. <laughs> well, no, nah, she was on no level. Right. <laughs> she, was, That's she was on a different you know level what? back then. <laughs> she, she was, was on a different, different level. Yeah, we she had different, on a different level. <laughs> but, but it was still I had fun doing it. You know what I'm saying? It was no disrespect to her. Uh, you know what I'm saying? It was just I thought it was cool. Uh <laughs> It Again, was. no disrespect for her, just listening to it. And I'm like, I'm about to have a little fun with it. And right? know, that's all it was, you know. But right. I love yeah, it. It was cool. It was Ooh, cool. Y'all so took we, me way back. We had <laughs> yeah. a conversation yesterday, and you said, um, you know, 86. 86, I don't know if it was uh, something in the in the air. But uh, 86 uh -huh. is when you, you know, decided to uh, become a DJ. Um, yeah. a, lot, a lot of, a lot of, like I said, that date always sticks out to me for whatever reason. It just does, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe Eric B. Rakim, mm -hmm. uh, the um, uh, the Public Enemy uh, wow. uh, album, Bum Rush the Show, uh, and then you know the BP album. So just the yeah. '80s kind of, you know, took it took it away. I was still in high school, and I know you already graduated uh, yeah. from school at that point. Um, and you know, we had a conversation yesterday where you were saying there were what there was the average listener, and then there was the you know the novice yeah. listener, which yeah. was your was your, was your pops. Um, yeah. he, he exposed you to all kinds of music. He had a mm -hmm. he, had, he pops had uh pops had a great sound system, great yeah, system. yeah. And, and he had tons of jazz, and he was able oh. to expose that to you. And, you know, a lot of the, the first beginning of, you know, hip hop, well, you know, it was uh, it was kind of new at that time, still in 86. You know, they were sampling all that. Yeah. All that jazz, <laughs> uh, all the James Brown stuff. So they were all sampling that stuff um, in the beginning. So and they still do it to this day. Like you said, oh, yeah. a dope beat is going to be from inception to it's going to it's going to live on. It's it never it never goes away. If it's a dope beat, it's it's going to always be there. Right. Mm -hmm. Um. So graduating from Demby, the instrumental. Uh, graduating from Demby in '86. Hey, uh, my mama graduated from Demby. Okay, sorry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Eastside. Okay. Gone to LK. <laughs> yeah. Eastside. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You, sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean to interrupt. <laughs> like you, uh, if you uh, just trying to remember, so you went to a party and you seen, you know, DJ and all that, and you were like, "Man, yeah. I got it." got to do this i got to do this and then uh you ended up doing it i thought it was a cool story that and, and i have the kind of same parents you know mm. they, they just support you and whatever you did and i thought that was kind of cool because you said hey dad uh i want to buy you know I, I give me one of your old turntables and mm. you had all match turntables and you had the uh -huh. the radio check uh um mixer and yeah. then you know and then you went up to uh I don't know if you said it was Wonderland or Guitar Center. Where'd you go? Wonderland. Wonderland back then. Wonderland is where you went. Uh, right. Oh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wonderland, and then you you saw um, you saw the um, the oh, techniques four hundred <laughs> or four hundred dollars, and you Damn. at the time and the, at Damn. the time four hundred dollars, bro. It was three ninety nine. Then it went. Then it that went was to a lot back then, then too. To, yeah, I mean, all I remember is I'm going to seven hundred, and then. 900 and then the 1210s came out and it was like yeah, well, inflation then it, was, then it was for real then it was for real 1200 <laughs> yep. so you like, thought, literally you thought, i remember so, all them prices <laughs> you had a good job but you were like man i'm not i'm not making that type of money <clears throat> nah, you, said, bro. you put it on layaway you got it on layaway mm -hmm. and then your dad said look you 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 want to do this i'll buy you i'll match it i'll buy you the other turntable and yep. the rest is the rest is history. So you got the twelve hundred. The rest, it's rest is history. Now you said it took you about three uh, years to come out. You know what I mean? You were mad practicing, you listening to beats. Yep. You were probably, you know, you were probably experiment, experiment, chasing. You were doing all that stuff, right? You were trying mm -hmm. to match up, trying to figure out, you know, all what what it was all about. So you said the eighty nine, you get your first party, and yeah. you were like, you were you were just like killing it. <laughs> You were killing it, eighty nine party. Now we talked about it, and and I was just kind of, kind of just kind of YouTubing it and all that. But it's true. Right. So a lot of, uh, excuse me, a lot of the stuff on the inside, <clears throat> the dance, the jitting, 
shaking your ass kind of music. Mm -hmm. So that's what was in your neighborhood. So that's what you cater to because that's what yep. they want to hear. And it's funny because you, you said you went to a West Side party maybe a couple of years ago after that. And all they wanted to hear was rap music. They want to hear Matt, hardcore yeah. rap. Huh? They messed me up with that. I mean, I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't prepared for that, you know, because <laughs> everything I had done to that point was all techno. Right. You know, everything was beat per minute was over 122. You you rarely right. played anything other than that. Fast, all the booty so, music. Right. Yeah, the booty, Bass the, booty music, the techno. Mm -hmm. And like right. I said, at that time, I'm from the east side. I didn't even know, you know, what you, what when I came and met you guys with freestyle, mm -hmm. I was playing it thinking right. it was techno. For us, it was techno. We were just playing it because it was right. over yeah. 122 beats right. per minute. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then I went to that that West Side thing, man. Like I say, they was partying, brother, and I was just playing rap. And I said, I'm about to kill them. Wait till I hook it up, and start playing <laughs> right. and all that. Wait, it's over for everybody. Yeah, right. yeah. You know what? They, they, they were yeah, bugging. Y'all don't even they know. Rap. And you know what? Yeah. The techno and the freestyle and that house music. Like I'm not gonna lie, I did the house and the techno. Like I, I just. I just I couldn't get with it. I you know mm -hmm. I, certain certain things I like numbers. Yeah, Cybertron. Yeah. Okay, that you know, and and, and all the um, oh, I'm trying to think of uh, direct beat. Yeah, direct, all like direct that, beat. when I when I first heard X when I first heard X Square. Yeah, man, I was like that. Still, like like that that record like is ridiculous. That beat to me is mm -hmm. like one of the dopest beats ever made <laughs> when it comes to yeah to it's just, you know like like on this side of town they was jitting like was huge and like I say in my yeah. circle where i grew up at you know i had the mad dancers and mad sound so you know everything everything you did you know <laughs> was on that level right. um like i say so my first parties man i don't think i played a song my first gig out the house i don't think i played a song less than 122 minutes Beats per minute for eight hours straight. It was Dang. just right. wow. It, right. That's just what it was, dude. Everybody right. was just jitting. So why like do I, say, I hear jit, 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 in my head right now? So many, <laughs> it, it'd be so. It'd be a crowd just circling cats. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? They, 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 oh, but, yeah. And, you know, yeah. and they still do it to this day. You know, like the yep. mad, mad dancers. I give them mad props, man. They, uh -huh. they, they are, and they all my boys. Oh, so yeah. they uh, all, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I was anyway, watching you know, Merlin jitting online the other night. I'm like, oh, here we go. He's oh man, that's that's the great thing, you know. So. Right, you know, and then just going over to the west side, dude. They didn't do the same thing, you know. It's like say, like, say, like I was telling you, Drake, when I'm when I'm setting up, I'll just have music playing. So I I had rap playing, and right. as I was setting up, they was over there bugging like more. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm about to kill this right. one, dude. Right. Yeah, right. And, you know, so, so I hit him with the, I hit him with the clears and all that. <laughs> They oh, danced, man. but you know that's when they went and right, got their drink right. and chilled out. Oh, then I was like, man, man. they ain't they not booking like the East Side do. So I put rap back on, and the floor was packed again. I was like, okay, so yep. West Side a little bit different. <laughs> you yep. know, what I'm you just but knew, you, you just knew you were learning how to work that crowd, man. Mm -hmm. Work the crowd. Yeah, and that's when you learn to read the crowd. That's right. You know, yeah, I read the crowd. I went hip -hop nothing there. better I, than that. Yeah, my personal preference was always hip hop, though. It was just you know that's where I grew up. You know, it right. was all. You know techno, but my right. personal yeah. always hip hop. Right. I, you, I think I just try to fuse the two, right? And you just know with hip hop, you just kind of know like what certain songs will connect with certain people. Oh, with yeah. you know no with the crowd and all that. It's a little bit easier, you know, just a little bit. But yeah, but it's it's a great feeling. <laughs> Isn't it interesting though when you go to certain places and you really see the difference at that point? You're like, wait a second, okay. Yeah, they really yeah. they really migrate to a certain and it's like that and mm. with everything in life, the demographic yeah. when you go to certain places and people try to say, Oh, it's not different. No, there is. There's it a is. different vibe in different areas. You have to <laughs> it, be able to and it takes such it, it is a talent to be able to read. <laughs> It, to oh, be yeah. able to read a crowd, to be able to read, uh, you know, what diversity, what goes on, the vibe in certain areas. People don't understand that's a talent. That's a gift. So, good job. Yeah, and, and you do that. <laughs> you, you you find yourself as a DJ, you read everything. From that point, you mm -hmm. everywhere you go, you, you're reading crowds. Everything you yep. do, you're reading <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Always. You, you just well, analyze. Well, music is a language of love. So, you, yep. have, you have to be just able to it figure down. it out. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's oh. a whole other language. But that's, so, you know, the cool part. Go ahead, Dre. No, no, I was just going to, we were just going to move timelines, but go ahead. No, no, no you're fine. So, it, so you got, um, you know, like I said, you got 89 and you're, you know, you're partying. And then you told me the story where someone starts bootlegging your tapes or your oh, action. Yeah. yeah, doing. <laughs> and you're not, you're not mad at them. You're like, hey, you know what? They're, 
gonna they're gonna sell. They're gonna they're gonna steal yeah, my it's shit. It's your name and shit, but still yeah, they're gonna, they're gonna sell your <laughs> stuff. I mean, it, it happens everywhere. Yeah. Uh and then you decide to say, look, we're gonna do a color tape and mm -hmm. then <laughs> You know, it, it kind of you know it sells itself. Yes, it's Everybody genius. wants to go. <laughs> I mean, that is a marketing like fucking huge move. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. It was like you basically just said, "Look, if it ain't gold, it's been bo a bullet." <laughs> bull I mean, and, uh, and, and, and as I was telling you how that that worked out. I didn't, you know, the bootlegging didn't hit me like that. I, I know people gonna do what they're gonna do. I look at it as a compliment at first, like, oh, okay, cool. I, right. You know, obviously people like it. They bootlegging it. Um, but then at the same time, right. you get to a point like, all right, hold on. When you have, yeah. you know, I didn't mind like your average Joe's bootlegging it, but when it was other DJs starting to <laughs> on it, that's when it's like, okay, wait a minute, where's that respect that you know, you know, right. we don't bootleg each other like that. And right. then, so, and like I said, at that time, when you was making the mixtapes, everybody was using TDK's tape, you know, that right. was TDK, right. TDK, right. Tape, you know, and so yeah. that was the difference because I was like, okay, right. so how do we, how do we control some of the bootleg? bootlegging it, it, right you know let's take it off the tdk so let's make our tape different and that's why i say right. we went on i, I can't remember so uh the name of the place we used but we went on and we started looking for colored tapes and i had seen the red ones i had seen the blue one but i had never seen right. the gold and right. so i was like let's go Damn. with gold Damn. The and my father, my father Ray, we right. was like uh you know right. he's the marketing guru to be honest with you and so we would sit up and we would throw throw ideas off of each other right. and i was saying something about gold you know something with gold and <laughs> since the tape is gold Right. And then and then it just it just flowed. He he made he said something about bootlegs and gold, and next thing you know, soul <laughs> came out, and it was if that it ain't is, gold, bootleg and soul. And it's like bam, that's it. That's amazing. And so man. you know, I wasn't at that time. I wasn't big for always throwing your your you know your your sayings and monikers out there. I right, wasn't big. Right, right, right. But right. after all the bootleg, and I was like, man, we we got to right. do something. So gotta, out of sometimes you got to so, slide your credentials across the table yeah, and remind yeah, them who yeah. you are. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, and, and it, I was shocked that. because it took off. I went and got shirts made of a bootleg and so yeah. you know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? So it, it it took off. People were yeah, I would see people and people would just say that they wouldn't even call me motion. They would just be like if it go if, if it ain't yeah. gold, <laughs> so, right, so. right. you know what I'm right. that's it why, just, you I would get it tattooed on me. Yeah, <laughs> it was right. just, you know, yeah, but I, I, you know, how <laughs> close were you trying, how close were you right, getting right. the tattooed on you? How close were you? <laughs> well, I, I wasn't that you close. Know, I, only had, yeah, I only had one at the time, you know. I, 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 it, but then, you know, if I, if it was if I could go back, I definitely would have done it because you know, non tattoos is like all over the place. You, right. People get everywhere. But back then, you know, I only had one, so I, I it, that that fetish for tattoos hadn't hit me yet. Right. Um, oh, exactly. My name to say motion. That, that was it. But <clears> it man, was you like, know what? You know that that tape though, with with that label on there, it was like. <laughs> You know, it, it's like historic, and I don't, yeah. like, I don't, you know how big it spreads out, but around here, you know, it, it, it's, it reminds me of the, uh, you know, like Raekwon with the purple yeah. tape, purple you tape. know what I mean? And there's only, there's only that, and then there's the gold one, and I just remember, you know, going in friends' cars, and it didn't matter. That tape was in everybody's car, truck, whatever the hell they were driving, and it stood man. out, and it For stood real. out. And people Don, were like, Don let said, me, "Beast from like, the east." Like people, <laughs> people, were, people were like, "Let me borrow." Look, huh? Let me, look, let, you know, people want to borrow your tape. You know, hell no, nah, man, ain't borrowing that shit. You know what I mean? So no, not the gold it, one. It, it was <laughs> not the gold being, one. Being that hot, man, just it, well, it was ridiculous. That, just stuck, I, stuck in my head, stuck in my well, head. Well, it was a funny conversation because uh, Motion <laughs> talked yesterday, and he said, "Uh, you know, I didn't know anything from Southwest. These these no. these tapes been sold <clears> in these." Stores. Oh. My boy did all that. But I didn't <laughs> right. know anything. And he said, not till you reached out to me and brought me over and Babel, because he, he actually met wow. Babel right. at his job. Right. So yeah, me and Babel worked together. That's how I met him. Oh man. Right. right. Yeah. And he oh, brought man. you over to Southwest Detroit. He's like, Oh, okay. This is this is what Southwest Detroit is. Okay. That's yeah, a I whole nother world. A whole nother world. Isn't oh, it? Whole <laughs> You know, like, I, no, I, I, and you got to be just, accepted in. You don't just go there. No, you know what? No, you, like, you, you got to have an man. inside you plug. Are, I you, are, you, are, you know what? You're 100 with that. It was like, you know, me and Babo worked together for years. And then, you know, he told me he spun a little bit. But that time, he wasn't really messing around like he was at one point. Right. And so, you know, and I was into it heavy. 
And, you know, then he he reached out to me one day and to do a party. It was a party. I remember it being a party. It was a house party. And we had to go upstairs. And I had never really, besides uh, work, I had never really been in Southwest. So right. I'm like, yeah, right. cool. I'm, I'm this kid coming from the east side. Dang. I know Babel from work, but I don't know anyone else. Mm. So, right, right. You know, proud too. Trust him, and, you're trusting and, him, you know. You know, it's just me. You know what I'm saying? I didn't travel right. with a posse or nothing like that. Right. It's just right. me. You know, right. I, I, you know, I, I put in there wherever I go. And I got there, and I will tell you this. When I walked out of there, I walked out of there with the best feeling in the world. And uh. I tell all my boys this day, I love standing in Southwest. And I'll tell you why. Yeah. Because... Because to me, the Southwest audience has always appreciate the skill set of the DJ, you know, sure. and so you can go there and show your ass. You can go there and do. Mm -hmm. They want you to, to rip that For shit sure, up. Man. They didn't want yeah. you to sit there and blend. You know, they want you to rip it up. And I was like, man, listen, this, this is the best shit ever. I, I right. got there and I didn't know what to expect. I walked out of this so hype. You know what I'm saying? I was like, man, when the next one. <laughs> right, <laughs> you know right. Saying? That's so true. You know, yeah. it's yeah. hard to be accepted there. But once you're in, like I said, you got to have a plug. You can't just go. This is a hard crowd. You can't right. just walk up right. into nowhere. Yeah. You got to know people. You got to have seal of approval. Yeah. But but they are such a loyal community. Southwest is such a loyal community in general that mm -hmm. you feel good once you're accepted. So I know that was big. I know them. Well, I always got to treat that family, like family after that. You know, what absolutely. So, mm -hmm. Everybody always treats me cool. For sure. Yeah, that's real talk right there. You would tell me yesterday what you were going to tell me. You're like, we're going to talk to Bud oh. on it. So tell me what you're talking about. So Dream played a bigger role in the way he knows and, and a lot of oh, things that I did oh, okay. and a few oh, things that I did right afterwards. Right? And he had no idea. So I think, Dream, correct me if I'm wrong. So I think I met you. Did you have like a radio station or something? Was that I you? I was, yeah, that's how I met you. I was going to bring that up, me. go ahead. <laughs> yeah, you invited me to that radio station and it was on burner or something like that. Yep. And right I came next down to there. <laughs> That's when I first I you called me and but I had never met you. And I met you then. I came down there for that. And and again, nothing but love. You know what I'm saying? So it was Aww. like, all right. And then years had passed, and I think you had moved away at that time and you was back in town. And this is right after uh um you know Pac was was murdered. And right. I guess I was you. So one of my boy, my, my business partner actually was all over me about making a pop mixtape. And, and really, I didn't want to oh. do it. And he was he was wow. all over me. He was nonstop. He wouldn't let it go. You need to make a pop mixtape, pop wow. mixtape. And I'm like, nah, dude, I'm, I'm, I don't really want to, you know. Right. Touch that. Cool. Let everybody else right. do that. I don't want to do it. Mm -hmm. But he was so persistent. So I was like, all right, dude, I, I'll do it. And so I started trying to do my research because I don't I don't like to just play stuff. So I started trying to do research. Let's say so let's come up with a story. That was the whole thing. Cause I needed a skit. Right. So right I can't right. just start it off. I gotta have some type of skit. Damn. And so I was like, how can I do this? So at that time there was some conspiracies around the whole death. So I was like, well, let's let's play off that. We'll play off the conspiracy. Oh man. So I, I remember watching yeah. usual suspects when he said at, at the right. end the great <laughs> trick at school. And <laughs> and mm -hmm. so I just edited. The, the part where you say the greatest oh, trick the devil ever pulled. I just took that out and put the greatest trick ever right. pulled. Events of the world, you didn't exist. And I had Machiavelli, I had the Machiavelli instrumental playing behind it, um, and then <laughs> just going from there. And then so that's how the skit was created. Uh, and we started going so from there. Good. But you know, that shit was so I had good. a little inside <laughs> inside hookup. Uh that was the first one I did, and then right. everybody wanted me to do another one, you know, because I was that one in blasted off, man. Oh my god, man, I know, and then they wanted me to do more, and I was like, dude, I don't, I don't have enough un, un you know, unreleased material, like, and right. then all of a sudden it started flowing. So, well, one of my boys, close friend, became Dog Pound's tour DJ, and Wait. when that happened, oh, he nice. was hitting me up with everything, like Damn. he was sending me un, so much unreleased stuff, right. and then out of nowhere. I get this call from Dreek, right? <laughs> and I ain't talked to him in years. And he starts saying he has to talk to him. So what he uh, don't know, I don't know if y'all can read this. It says, you see what it I says? Dreek's no, what does it say? What's it say, Dreek? It says Dreek's, it says Dreek's pop, first one he gave me. Okay. Oh, so, look yes. at that. So you no. out an That's so awesome. And on those mixtapes, there was some unreleased stuff on oh there. Oh, my and God. I got them off of there, and I put them in my NPC, and I re-edited them, and that oh all came from God. Oh, 
Oh, I, he so I, I, I know so that feels good. I know where they came from. <laughs> hey, I hey, how did have to ask you where those, that what songs they are? Uh, how did I even get that tape? That's I don't know. You crazy. had two of them, and you gave man, them to me. I'm like, man, all right. Yeah. You might have got that from like Z Trip or something by accident. See, man. everything comes full circle. Man, that is crazy. That's yeah, so dope. Like, that is so dope. Like, on my shouts out, like on my shouts, if you look, your name is all over it because you gave me, you know, I you gave me that. quite a few. So when I That's combine dope. what you gave me and I combine, <laughs> combine with the dog town they gave me, I'm like, okay. <laughs> This emotion, don't make his head bigger than it already no, is. You're, Come on now. No, man, we ain't going to be able to fit it on this what? podcast. You already got, <laughs> we you already, already got to drive out the car with his head out the car half the time. Oh, don't really? make, I'm just kidding. I'm just but kidding. No, you, you know what, though? You that's so got, awesome. I love that story. That's, that's great. That, yeah, I love that's all dope. that. That's dope. And, and I'm so glad dope. That, you, that you brought up, you know, the radio station, because that's where I first met you. That's and then, cool. and then, and then. And then he ended up doing uh, um, a part, a, a thing at the GI Forum, which it, it it didn't do so well. But you, but you still showed up. Was that a DJ? Was that like that, a DJ competition? It, yeah, it, yes, yes, I remember that. And a few, I remember that. a couple other D, DJs didn't yeah. show up. And I and and I remember us talking about it and saying, "Do you think it's because DJ Motion's name was on there? <laughs> like, you know what I mean?" <laughs> And I'm for real. We, we I remember talking about that, but I, all the I intimidation was real. I, I had that just, was lovely too. Yeah, I had just hey. started DJing. Hey, it is what it is. And, <laughs> no, you showed up. You did your set. It was like half hour sets, you know, like it used to be. And yep. and and all I remember is standing up there, and I was like, I just want to watch him. I I just want to watch him. You know, running around doing whatever we're doing and all that. And so I was like, and I watched you. That was the first time I seen it, and I was just like, like what? Like I was just so blown away. I I, mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't believe what I was. I'm for real, to, for real. But so I'm like I'm marking out for you on on the show live. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I, I loved it, man. I loved it, and I and it, and it hooked me on her big time. Other than my yeah. cousins getting me into it. Yeah, and I'm. I'm like, super wow. humble, brother. I, I appreciate that. I've never been. You know, if when people tell me things like that, I, I can say is, "Hey, I, I appreciate it, man," because I ain't—I've right. never been one of them ones like, "Yeah, yeah." No, nah, I'm like, <laughs> that give me that give me the whole right. thing. Like I was telling Drink, man. Like I grew up, man. Some of my boys were hard as hell, right? They were right. like, they—they they wasn't your typical. They, their encouragement was to bash you. That's the way they encourage right. y'all. You ain't gonna be shit. You Tough. ain't gonna. That's right. the shit, right. you know. So that that got me flowing. You know, they that's what right. pumped me up. You ain't gonna be. Right. And so I did that. So from that, I became humble. Like man, listen. You know, what I'm saying sure. I, I became like the Barry Sanders of DJ, man. I was right. like, yeah, you know, right. I appreciate it, Graceful. man. You know, I'm not. Right. I'm not. Yeah. You know, and, I've never you know been what? that way. So. You let your skill speak for itself, that, and that is that you just put a word in my head, and that's basically that's that's the perfect word. When I seen you scratching, it wasn't like no, and, and and the reason I say this is because I've seen, and I'm I'm not gonna name everybody's name in Southwest Detroit, <laughs> Call them but out. I've seen so many DJs scratch, good good close friends and everybody. I seen the best in it, but I when I seen you back then, and even I'm, I can't even imagine now. You know what I mean? It's probably you know like like scratching with a feather, but I just remember, <laughs> I just remember being blown away, man. And, Really, yeah. really blown away, and, and I was, you know, I was 15 at the time. I was young, and I, I was oh, okay. I just fell in love with DJing and stuff like that. So, you know, and then my cousin, like I said once again, he, you know, he just, you know, when he when he came and started doing his own thing, promoting hip hop parties and all that stuff, and he just put mm -hmm. that sprinkled a little bit more of that hip hop on me, man. And listen, and in that industry, enough. people's egos are so big, and they, <laughs> oh, you know. know their you egos know. are so big, so when you come, you come humble and kill them all. That's nice. Yeah, you egos. Know? Is, you know, egos to me. You know, it, you can, it, everybody has them, but I think uh, I think even even your quiet people have them. But I think Absolutely. the best people keep it to themselves. When they get yeah. home, they be like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> 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 right. Yeah, behind closed. Like, like I killed that shit. That was yeah. me. You, know, but... you, you, you want to be good at what you do. You know what I'm saying? But you don't right. need to rock. Let right. your game right. speak. You, you know what I'm saying? Game will speak for itself. Right, you don't need to right, broadcast. Right, right. So, exactly. you know, some people like to do that. That that was never my style. I always always yeah. let, let that brag. I, I just sit in the back and do what I do. Um, right. You know, I, I think a lot of it too was just the the you know the the fusing of the two, fusing of, of techno with the hip hop scratching. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. So 
you know, hip hop cuts were patterns, different styles from transforming to, to, you know, I used to call them Latin, people call them chirps and all this other stuff. And, and, <laughs> and then in techno, it was right. at 100, right. 120 plus beat per minute. So you're doing right. faster, fast. you right. just cut real fast. That, and so right. when you start, when you start putting yeah. those two yeah. together, you create a whole nother sound. Yeah, right. you gotta find right. that balance. Right. 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 Bringing the two together, you know, right. and I think, um, most people on the east side was just doing regular cuts, and then most people on the west side was just doing hip hop. And I kind of was right. doing both. So I kind of put both of them together, you know what I'm saying? And that's kind of what yeah. I was doing. You know, it just was natural for me. But also, you know, that made me kind of wild, though. Like, one thing I would say, <laughs> man, I'll be honest with you. Like, I have a hard time staying on, you know, I look at a lot of DJs, man, and, I, and I, I'm in awe of a lot of DJs, you know, I watch them. And I love the fact that a lot of DJs are so controlled at what they do. They can focus on one cut and just do it. Me, right. I, that's not me, man. I'm I'm like uh, kid with right. ADA. I, right. I might do one cut. Next thing you know, I'm I'm free. I'm doing something else. Right. right. The way my ADHD right. is set up. Hey, I'm all over. <laughs> and, and, I'm all over. And, and, and you know what? And, uh, check it out, Sean. Uh, you know, I remember. Like, I don't. I don't remember. If, I mean, maybe you were just that damn fast. If, if you spun, <laughs> if you spun at the radio station. But I remember, I remember, uh, you know, Wax, you know, Wax Sax and Dre, Wax, Tax, and Dre. Doing, his, doing his set. And, and this is another like history <laughs> lesson for me. Mm -hmm. I was standing there and, and I think he did like he had like 20 minutes, half hour. It was fast. He had like so many records stacked up that he just went through like, right. like ridiculously. And I was like, oh, my God. Look, like, I was, I was just like, oh, my God. It was kind of discouraging. It was right. kind of discouraging, but it was <laughs> awesome. It was, it was amazing at the same time. He was like, wow. And I was fuck. just like, holy <laughs> shit. This guy is just, he went through, he, like, whatever crates he came with, I'm, I'm pretty sure he went through them. But oh, that yeah. was him. That was what he did. Yep. Max, Tax, and Dre. I mean, I was like, okay, okay, I get it. <laughs> but, You're yeah, like, so yeah, everybody, I step my everybody game has up. <laughs> And no, everybody has their style, and, and I got that. And that was why I love, you know, being around you guys and watching you guys, and I would just watch. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we, we yeah man. Different. Based yeah. off, I, th I think Dre was from so um, different back then. Course area. Oh, yeah, E-Course yeah, e area, e yeah. Dre from e so it was slightly, like you said, like, like you were saying, demographically, you have different styles, right. believe it or not, of, right. of things you do. So Dre was sure. e course course uh and of course we all grew up listening to the wizard so yeah you, right. you, you can find that you know so, right. so, um and dre, dre had a different style and you know I, to this day i love dre style dre got a nice style you know yeah. sure I, I love that style as yeah. well you know so but you know like he's say, a, he's i say i always adapt he can adapt to any, any like, anything anything he plays yeah, anything. Dre, dre, dre can do it handle his business man he always have been you know and you know, and then I remember I was telling Drake, uh, I remember um, going into a competition and I told him I had met, I knew the name, I heard the name before and I'm like, man, I know this guy. Okay. And over the years, man, Baby will ask me to do a uh, a New Year's Eve party with him. Okay. At, I think what it's called, the Express Bar, is that oh, okay. it? Okay, wow, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Old school bar. And so he asked me to do a, a New Year's Eve party right. with him, man. So when he gets there, uh, he introduced me to Hurricane, and I'm like, man, I know okay. I seen this guy before, dude. I seen okay. him before. I knew the name, you know what yeah. I'm saying? I know him. And right. but it, it still didn't register. It, it you know, didn't it, click. So many, it, <clears throat> it, right. it didn't register. And when I say, when I say, you know, this one, like I say, I, I, I'm not, you know, bullshit when I say it, dude. Y'all got y'all always open your arms to me, man. And so when I was there, Hurricane came out, <laughs> drinks the Lord, we having a good time. <laughs> Like, Aww. like I know everybody. I'm family right. here. Man. Yeah, right. So for sure, a couple years passed, and I was looking at. I was in the DJ competition, and um, I, I had a T-shirt, and the T-shirt had all the DJs' names on the back that was in that competition. <laughs> and, I, and I, I set up and I started reading it. I said, damn. "I'll be damn." I knew I knew him. Hurricane damn. was in that. DJ damn. I said, I knew damn. I knew him. Uh, That's a dope story, man. He Rest was in that piece, competition. Yeah, I told you it, it took a while. I, you know, it, it wasn't registering, but it came right. to me. I'm like, man, I, knew I knew him. He he was cool. He was wow. cool back then. You know, yeah. so everything everything's cool from there. It was just you know, and then so like, I, I, I see man. Don throwing out to the Clash of Titan because that was epic right yeah. there. Yeah, uh huh. Right. 
that was epic. She throwing it out she there. But that was, she, threw, she threw it out there. She threw she it out there. Out there. <laughs> that was epic. We had a good time that night. Yeah, DJ yes, Hurricane, uh, never forgotten. Mm -hmm. So from 89 to, uh, to 99, you know, you, 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 you're killing it with the mixtapes. Yeah. Uh, you know, you come up with your own color of mixtapes. Uh, I'm looking at this Tupac. I don't know which one you did or this one, because I know you did a couple different ones. This one was uh, MP, Tupac and her Machiavelli remix. <clears throat> what, how many versions you did, but I know you did a couple. Uh, yeah. Is this the one that, that you compiled, or was this the first one? The, the remix, if it says extended, that is the last one that I did. That was uh, the last one. Right. That was the last one I did. Actually, my favorite one, to be honest with you. Um, just for wow. the simple fact, I released, and I know what work I had to put in to make it work. Uh, that's I made that one when I started, uh, I started actually producing, too. So I had a little studio built in my basement. So when I made that one, I did a lot of remixes to it because a lot of it was underground. So the, it wasn't mastered. So I had to master it myself. Damn. And so I redid them, you know what I'm saying? I put them right. through the MPC. I had to beat, <clears throat> right. I had, I had to some of them just to make it clearer. Clear, clear them out, um, right. right. Yeah, For sure. So I, I like that one the best because I, I know what type of work I put in um, to mm, make that yeah. happen. Um, Man, of course, that's... the first one didn't have one usual suspects. I like the intro more than anything. I put, I thought that intro was super tight. That's when I put in the Kaiser Sose and, and did that. You know what I'm right. saying? I used to sample some of everything, man. I I, I would play video games, some of the like Resident Evil. So y'all probably don't know. <laughs> right. I know. I got gamers in my house. I know what that is. Right. Intro, I need I needed some like some some weird music to go with the entrance. So maybe, right. like, you know, trick every pool. And so I sampled a uh, uh, Resident Evil and put it with with a uh, uh, Hail Mary. Ah, <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it, it turned out it turned out pretty be pretty good. And then, oh, you that's know, dope. And, uh, I did the little acapellas and did all that. So, you know, so it, it was cool, man. You know, like I say, it wasn't something I wanted so to what, do, but that's actually, I, uh, I know we talked about the DMC. Uh, what year did you hear the DMC contest? Uh, DMC, I think, was 91, I believe it was. 91. Okay. 91. Whoever don't know what the DMC contest, basically, it's the best DJs in the world. And it goes from, it goes from regional, and then it goes uh, national, and then you know, and then you, you know, you're doing Europe. You know, yeah, you over there. Yeah, so yeah. the grand yeah. prize at the time, what I remember, was two techniques. <laughs> yeah, gold, gold, yeah. gold. gold. Yeah. gold. I would love it. That would have been perfect with if it ain't gold, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> so you, uh, I know you said you got to the, uh, you you got past Detroit. You went to the regionals in Chicago, and you were just like. You're just freestyling like a freestyle rap artist. You're like, I don't have a set. I'm just gonna do it. And you were just like, you were kind of blown away of, yeah. you know, <clears throat> in a competition, something like that. Um, and is, is this where you meet? Uh, is this where you meet Shortcut or not? No, Shortcut. I met Shortcut at that same spot where uh, the competition where uh, Hurricane was at. That okay. was at that. One. Yeah. So it was Shortcut and uh, DJ Disc. Those okay. were the two. They were, those were the two cats from Scratch Pickle that, that was there. So those were the two cats that, that I met there. Um, the DMC was actually went on to St. Louis. I mean, went on to Chicago. That was because I won Detroit portion and then went on to Chicago. And then in Chicago, um, I, I would say probably the biggest names that I can remember was uh, DJ Sinister from um, oh, The Executor. Right. And he was in it. And then... Uh, then you had some cat from St. Louis, man. And those were the two guys that impressed the hell out of me. Those are two guys I felt like if I had put a set together, that would give me a run for my money. Right. Um, I felt like everybody else was just pretty much uh, a duplicate. They basic, was just <laughs> basic, right? Yeah, right. What everybody else do, you know what I'm saying? I always, I always felt like, listen, you can have one Jay Z, you only <laughs> gonna have one Michael Jackson, you only <laughs> gonna have big one Biggie, one Pop. You got to be you. And to me, all the other DJs were trying to be Cuber, trying to be somebody else. And and you and, two, right. And that's and I was gonna ask you. I was that was who I was gonna ask you. Did, did have you ever uh did you ever run into Cuber? I was gonna ask you that. No, I ran into uh I uh, and I was telling um Dreek about it. I ran into disc and disc was in shortcut was part of the pickles and, and um right. okay. and disc was real cool. I mean this was one of the coolest cats I ever met. Like when I say humble, like super humble. He was just sitting up talking, we exchanged that's numbers. Dope. Um, he gave me his number. I got shortcut number. Then he gave me his cube, cube number. I never okay. called nobody, but it was they were right, very, right, very right, right. 
that time to do anything. So I never really kicked it with Cubit. Uh, I kicked it with a few other fat cats, but not Cubit. You know, uh, I thought yeah. Sinister was real good. I don't know if you. Uh, it was an old school cat. Uh, actually, damn good. He was in DMC too. A guy named um, uh, DJ Miz out of Philly. Uh, Miz okay, was damn, damn good. Uh, he had won. Miz won the DMC before uh, the, wow. the US DMC. Uh, wow. He had a, he had a <laughs> album out. A guy named Fresh Cold. Was Fresh Cold Miz. But Miz was real okay. cool. And he fell in love, and I was that was the- <laughs> and he got oh, booed he- up. Yeah, he got booed up, man, big time. Man, that was it. He was in love. yeah, he was in love. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, yeah, it can it, it can take some out of you, you know. What I'm saying? Hey. <laughs> that's why we quit. That's why we quit. Equipment got that's why yeah. I quit getting oh, yeah, booed up. So hey. <laughs> I, I bounced back. <laughs> there you it go. Was time to retire. <laughs> Point in 2000, you know, life changes. You know, you get married or you get, uh, sorry, you get divorced. Um, all that stuff changes. You kind of say, you know what? I'm going to just make, if music is just going to be for me uh, at this point, and you kind of step away. And then, like I said, you, I think you, you said, you know, you still are doing things, but it's mostly out of love. But, and, yeah. Maybe making most mixtapes out of your love or whatever, or basically for you. <clears throat> so I think everybody had that life changing divorce. So I have, Alex has, I think Tori has. So we all know yeah. what you're, what that, what that, what that does to you. So yeah, I, I get it. Uh, you know, at the end, <laughs> at the yeah. end of the story, we know but what the that is. The bounce game is way stronger. Just got to stay. Okay? In, just got to Bounce back game, strong, just strong. Stay in motion. Right. Just stay in motion. <laughs> Okay, that's all that matters. You know, tell me. I know the story you were telling me about um, a person that uh, that I guess they they send you and they wanted your feedback, and I wanted the guys, I wanted them to hear it. So you, um, someone sends you something and says, "Okay, I want your honest feedback because you're coming up with your own record label. You're getting mad respect. You're producing. You're making beats. So." Mm Thing. Some people are sending you things, you know. Hey, what's your thoughts of this? What do you? What's your thoughts of this cat? What's your thoughts of that cat? And that'll move on to what I want your. What's your thoughts of hip hop now? Okay. But when you when you when you got that and you're like, hey, this guy fucking sucks. Quit, <laughs> quit now, quit now. And then yeah. and then you know, if he would have listened to you, like you said, he would never been that person. But yeah, his uh, career would have been over. Uh, yeah, I like. <laughs> Story. Go ahead. <laughs> well, well, you, at that time, you know, uh, Urban, you had record labels and you had artists, hip hop artists that was going platinum and gold that didn't get any radio play. So record labels figured out how to get urban listeners from the radio. So you can get urban listeners and urban sales just from listening to the radio. But how is it that NWA and all them going platinum and, and gold with no radio play? No radio so play. It was the street. So you had the urban DJ that was pumping that. And so they started, they switched their focus from urban radio to urban DJs. And so they started targeting us. So they was, they would be, I would get boxes at my doorstep every single day, just new records to critique. And then (laughs) we have these forms in there and you would have to say what you thought about it. uh, Honest opinion. If it was an album, it, it would say what should be the next single or should they make a video for it? They ask you your opinions. So I got this one that came. I had never heard of this cat before. And it came <laughs> and I played it and I was like, what in the hell is this? <laughs> and, I go, and I put it on, I put it on there and my feedback. I like, bro, I need to stop rapping. Cause this <laughs> is terrible. Uh, it's I like this is the worst thing ever. And that cat ended up being Master P. Oh um, no. So, yeah, he ended up, wow. end up being Master P. I thought that was the worst stuff ever. And and from that you- point. Wow. That that quieted me. That silenced me. I was like, you know what? Going for it. If that young man had wrote read what I wrote, <laughs> he would have never pursued his career. So wow. now so I switched yeah. it to it. Just ain't my. It, it's not for me. I'm quite sure there's a there's some fans out there for it, but for me, it ain't my cup of tea. Oh, um, he God. heard that. Ah, he said, "What oh, the man. fuck is this?" You <laughs> what you, is you, 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 you probably, number two. You probably created that. Uh, when he was sitting, when he probably did read a little. He That's like, what I was uh, thinking. I said maybe he read what you wrote, like how your friends crazy. used to clown on you talking about you ain't gonna be shit, you ain't gonna be shit. Right. And maybe you know we're gonna flip this. You were his motivation to become right. Who he That's is. what I'm saying. You I did was. that. 
Honestly, I was. I'm glad I was motivation for somebody. I mean, that, 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 <laughs> honestly, I was like, you know, it, it was just, you know, you got to think about that. Think about that era, man. Right. You, you had yeah. to have lyrics. You you had to, and it was just right. you didn't get mm-hmm. to play. You know you I re, you know how many mixtapes not mixtapes, mm-hmm. how many demos that that we heard as DJs, especially if you was yeah. popular. How many demos would just show up? How many people everywhere you went right. can you listen to stuff? Not everywhere stop. you went, it was so, it, it was so much easier in a way to. Right. to I mean, not you stop know, in your face. I mean, I know yeah. we have social media now, but yeah, you know, there was yeah. like people knew each other then, and it was just. Yeah. There was radio. Radio mattered back then a lot more. Right. Than it, it really now. mattered. But, I know, still love it. It really yeah. did. It really did. <laughs> so you had to come though. You you couldn't come. You know, right. you think about the lyricists. If you go back to to the end, you think about the lyricists that was out there. I mean, mm-hmm. these cats are coming. You know, what I'm saying this is before Biggie and them was. This was right at oh, the yeah. end. They're you actually know, telling a story. It. They're actually yeah, putting emotion it. into it. You know, I always say this, you know, to me, I always looked at that lyricists and all that. Um, it, you know, I mm-hmm. like rappers to say stuff that you can listen to today. I'm like, damn, that was sweet. Like, I didn't even right? ask that. Man. You yeah. know, I always yeah. related to the, the old rock and rap is rhythm and poetry. And I mm-hmm. break that down with R.A.P. Uh, damn, that was, I never caught yes. that back then. Yeah. You know what right. I'm saying? You know, yes. and it was like, that was It clever. was like, <laughs> mind blown when, when you, when you like, realized oh, it. You were like. Ice cream, man. And I'm like. No, they right. <laughs> right, right, right. And, you're and, like, and you know damn. What? And, and, and you know what? Right. Though, I I read an article about about him, and it, and it was about it's been about about four years, maybe longer, about him them making a movie. But they yeah. said that if he if they did it, that it would be like a trilogy, and he mm-hmm. would call it like that. I mean, because to me, I told I even I think I told Drake one time. I said I think that's like one of the most amazing stories, but it just has to be told the right way, at least from what I know about him. Mm-hmm. He's amazing, you know. He's like one of the first rap artists or just people, you know, that I heard of, about coming from nothing to having yeah. a having an elevator in his house. You know, like I remember yeah. hearing that yeah. back in the in the nineties and like, like I think yeah, he was the first a, rapper with know, an action so. figure. He was the yes. first rapper, right? Right, right, right. 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 Exactly. I forgot about that. Think, yeah, yeah. No, things like that. You know, I forgot for sure. about the action figure. Yeah. Things he like that. And, and and he's involved. You know, I'm a big wrestling fan. He's involved yeah. in that right Same. now. He's in, he's in yeah, in, uh, Torius too. It's like he's involved in a wrestling uh, organization right now. I don't know. He ain't really you know got it off his feet yet or nothing like that. But yeah, uh, yeah he's you know, just that, he's that's the beauty of business, like say, and that's when you have to learn that you know just because something is not in your wheelhouse does not mean that it's garbage. You know, and right. so you asked me about today's that, music. Yeah. You know, uh, today's music. I'm not. I, I'm a beats person first. I like some of the beats. I won't lie to you there. Some of the yeah. beats get crazy. Mm-hmm. But to me, I mean, you know, it, it's not my style of rap. You know, my girls, my daughters, they play it like, you know, crazy. And I right. was telling you, you know, <laughs> I don't knock it. And I'll tell you why I don't knock it. For me, you won't catch me just listening to it. Now, some of them are tight. You might <laughs> right. catch me. If they're kind of hard, then you'll catch mm-hmm. me kind of going on mm-hmm. those. But, um, you know, like, I always go back to my parents, man. My parents, you got to think about it. They came up before hip-hop, mm-hmm. right? And so, like you say, my, pop, my pops always had the down sound system, and they were right. my pops mostly jazz, smooth jazz. He was the first smooth jazz person. Uh, Watercolors. It, it, it was smooth jazz. He yeah, was smooth. <clears throat> yeah, so, you know, and just think about it. Now, I'm playing rap and techno. I know they have to be like, what in the hell is that? <laughs> right. Right. <laughs> I mean, this is cool. they're this like, is, you're making my you're ears to, bleed. What are you doing? Trigger, you might have triggered something with that techno. <laughs> right, but they, 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 the and so I look at it like this <laughs> if they put up what I was playing from <laughs> their generation to hip hop, right. at least still somebody trying to rap. At least I can, right. you know, I get that. That's still that same genre of music. But that yeah. transition from what they were listening to from Motown to, right. to jazz to, sure. to techno and NWA. Right. I mean, <laughs> you know, that was, right. and they never, as no Southern Greek, man, they never discouraged me, man. My, I remember I was playing, uh, mind playing tricks on you one day by the ghetto. Oh, man. Oh, and, man. Right. And my parents, yeah, my parents were at work. So, you know, naturally, what most kids do, they at work. I'm blasting. Mm-hmm. That's all hilarious. the way. The, the That's hilarious. Uncensored version. I'm <laughs> blasting. Dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun. So, so they come in the house and it's blasting. I didn't even hear them come in the house. They came oh. in, man. And I'm like, oh, oh man. Okay. My pops, you know, my pops, my mom and my pop. My pop's like, oh like <laughs> uh, yeah, because <laughs> and you know, and that and that was the beat. That was the yeah. beat that caught them though. Mm-hmm. It was like, that okay. beat. 
That be, you know, yeah. It would be, and I think everybody can relate to your mind messing with you. Yes, times, the right? lyrics yeah. don't really and, hit and, you. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. That. Uh-huh. I can give that story. That story, I get with these it, cats. It was, yeah, that's a classic. Home. You know, so that's funny. my daughters well, today, I, I don't, I don't discourage them. They play stuff twenty four seven. They keep saying, "I love you." Can hear Listen, you, you said. <laughs> Um, That's what you said, NWA. So I used to have a friend, right? And uh, well, I have a couple friends, but anyway, so I had this friend, <laughs> this girlfriend, and <laughs> I have a couple friends. So I have this girlfriend, and her her dad was super strict, super strict asshole white guy. Like, nope, you <laughs> just a fucking dick, right? right? But right, the mom, right, right. the mom was conformed to him, right? But but when he was gone, she wanted to be cool with us. So right. we yeah. got her. We got her, uh, we went and got her, she found our NWA cassette. And <laughs> she, Cindy loved to wash dishes to NWA. Super oh, white woman who whose husband was an <laughs> asshole. I'm sure back now I look wash back on it, dishes. there was probably some domestic violence if he was yeah. what you know, like he was he was a dick. But but she would be like, put that shit on for me. And she would be washing <laughs> dishes to NWA and we fucking miles loved miles it. Miles. And she would be like, right. ooh, R- <laughs> Ralph will be home in 20 minutes. We got to turn this off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and man. I if swear Ralph every time on, um, Ralph would have whooped <laughs> all of our asses. <laughs> Ralph. You don't mess with Ralph. Ralph no, Ralph had his meal ready. We all, right. no, no, you didn't breathe wrong around Ralph. But right. uh, yeah, yeah, but this that's shit, funny, every bro, time right. I hear NWA, it reminds me of Cindy Washington. Yeah, that's she's funny. You know, her dancing, her little white yeah, lady dance. Yeah, that's crazy <laughs> that you say that yeah. too, because I just, I had just, I just told, I, I'm not even lying. And then you're talking about just growing up in the household, but I right. just told a friend the other day about how. For Christmas, I I got an NWA tape and and I I let my my sister that got it for me listen to it a little bit. And I was like nine, I was nine years old. It was nineteen eighty nine. Let her listen to it, and they they were like, oh, oh my goodness, I didn't know I got you that. Took it and gave it to my mother. My mother hid it, and when my mother went to work, I went I I found I found it. I got out, you know I got out of school. I had like about an hour and a half, two hours, and I found it. And I you know I I would I would. Play, I was happy that I found it. I would play it, listen to it as much as I could, and then put it back. But yeah. listen, that's the I, I couldn't things. listen to it at my house. I had to go to Cindy's house to listen to right. it. Before, so Ralph we had to get it before Ralph got home at four o'clock. Yeah, so we didn't have a choice. <laughs> we only had about an hour and a half. Well, he got home right. about 4 30. We only had about two hours from the time school got out to be able to listen <clears> to it. And, and we would leave all of our cassettes there. We would hide them in our bedroom, but that's where I had to listen to it. So we had yeah. to get Cindy on board. And every time I would get a new one, my mother, she'd find them and she'd be like, what the fuck is this That's, shit? And she would take it and uh, hide it, right? And I think she I think she threw away my dog pound cassette three times. <laughs> three separate times. Listen, three times. This is funny. So I had I have another friend who finally was like, you know what? He, <laughs> he my mother took the seat the the cassette, right? And and he was like he, I'm gonna go get another one. So he stole it from a Kmart, right? <laughs> Damn, out gets, of the plastic. He gets caught because they find like this. They, yes, right. He gets <laughs> caught, got his ass beat, and we were clowning on him because when at Kmart they didn't sell anything with it was all all edited, Damn. so there was no yeah, exclusive lyrics. I said, "You got your ass beat for a cassette that didn't even have no cussing in it, like." Oh, that's yeah. Cool. <laughs> we would clown on him like you. At least should have stolen from somewhere good. Yeah. Oh so Don yeah. brought out Eastside. Eastside was tight, oh, right? Yeah, actually, was tight. Me, Eastside was very cool, yeah. man. We both grew up right here on the Eastside together. Yep. We yep. actually was a group. East me and Eastside was a group before. Wow, I mean, it was, no he, he was a rapper. I was a DJ. No I kidding. mean, not like that's Jeff Fresh Prince, but right. uh, we, we were actually <laughs> me and him uh, was a group. We he that's grew up around cousins. And yeah. we used to go, and we wow. met his brother. Name was James, and and his his brother and my cousin was real tight. And so I was wow. a DJ. Eshan was rapping at the time. Uh, he wasn't he wasn't popular at the time. It was just right. they were living right. with right. Crib, right. Right. right there Damn. on East Side. And so we had formed a little <laughs> little crew, and we used to. Do a little things together and try to come up with some stuff, wow. man. So she just put the name up there, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out, I to remember, yeah, man. yeah. Shout out, yeah. Shout out, to borrowing yeah. We go way of, of him from my boy, and he, my my friend, you know, one of my friends put me up on him, and and uh, he used to have one thing that I used to get a kick out of. He used to have so many songs on his 
on yeah. his, you know, he yeah. had like twenty, yeah. like yeah. like thirty songs on his on his tapes or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, yeah, or twenty something. I used to be like, wow, you know, you just didn't you didn't see that, but uh, but yeah, yeah that kid he, didn't he, stop. Um, yeah, yeah, he, sure. he was. It was. No, it was he was bad. everywhere, all over the <laughs> east side too. He was everywhere. He always did his thing. He never it's stopped. Crazy. Even when he went, you know, even when he was by himself, he just it, he never stopped. Yeah, it's you know? crazy mm-hmm. when you, when you know you think about the way these these guys back in the day were able to market themselves, man, without oh, yeah. social media or any picture, camera phones and all that shit. Like well, it's some, just it's just mind blowing. Somebody brought it up the other day, and, and it's true. You know, I kind of forgot about it, especially especially as a DJ. And then when you start crate digging, when you start producing and all that, right? You know, that's where you that's where you networked at the record stores. You know, you, right. you being in that crate digging, <laughs> right? And then you run into some of everybody. Right. I mean, man, yeah. we used to run into everybody there. You know, you right. gave everybody their piece. I remember, I remember crate digging, man, um, and running into while well, I'm crate digging, I look up, they go DJ Cash Money. We wow. right here. In the cash money wow. is over here. We right here at, at Grasher uh, uh, at record, record time. time. At record time. Yeah, I was about record. to say. Grasher Twelve Mile. Was, record, time. Ask, yeah, record time. Yeah, record um, time. Did, didn't you guys go? And I don't. I think I remember you guys met uh, Fife from Tribe Called Quest, right? Or no? I, I met. I met, I met, I met uh, a couple different guys. Craig Diggin. Uh, I'm right, I even? Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, not Denzel, but um, what? <laughs> what? At a record store because he used to DJ. Oh shit! With, uh, Wesley Snipes used to DJ. He used to DJ. I, I met him at a record store. That's dope. Uh, yeah, you yeah. always meet uh, shit from. I remember going in uh, uh, Car City Classic. You everybody, everybody being there. You Damn, DJ, oh. uh, Daddy <laughs> Riff, JD, JD. We ran JD. Oh, JD. Damn, that's, that's crazy. crazy. Tell you a we, funny story, Car my cousin. City. Wow, you right. brought back some memories right there, Car City. Right, yeah. Car City. One. You uh, at a record store. store. I don't know what record store it was on the east side. It was on Grash. I can't remember, but Fife was in there. Suburbs. So yeah, so I was in the record store and we were going through some records. And I was there with my cousin. I don't know if you met him. You probably did. His name was Michael. So he said, "I go, oh, there goes Fife or whatever." He's like, "Okay." So he go, he goes, grabs a a a fucking Madonna record, a Madonna (laughs) record. Can you sign this for me? <laughs> you know, he, was always, he was always doing shit like that. Uh, uh, Alex, Alex can see that. Love you, Mike. We love you. That's funny. I mean, she is from Michigan. Fuck it. <laughs> right. Shout out to my cousin DJ Michael G. That's Mike, funny. You, I mean, so. you know, it, it, you shit, and that's and that's what's different. Now it's just social media, but then right. that's when you would just run into some everybody, man. Yeah. And, and you would just it was sit a different there. time. Yeah, it was different. You would just sit there and vibe, man. You you right. run some everybody in there, and nobody mm-hmm. wants to. You know, we just try to hide what we get, especially when we crate digging. If I go over to a section, I'm like, hey, <laughs> right. I don't even see what I'm digging. Like, at. You know over here. You know what I'm saying? That's hilarious. <laughs> you hide what you were digging That's for. Hilarious. You're like, no, nah, bro, don't come over here. You stay yeah. over there. Like, you yeah. want me? Man, what everybody was either yeah, oh. everybody was either higher or on there. Oh man, you know, <laughs> smoked <laughs> out. <laughs> just thought about hip hop now. I mean, coming Sweet. from being ahead, I'm ahead. I'm yeah. you know huge rock head fan. I, every time he comes to the valley, every time he, he goes to Vegas, I go see him. You know, when they reunited with him and Eric back, Eric and Rock him, I had to go. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, what what is hip hop? I know you got you got the mumble raps. You got. Uh, you yeah. know, you got all these different guys. You got guys that just say a couple words, mm. and then you got Big it. Sean, and then you got guys like Big Sean and shit. So. Yeah, well, you know, I learned my lesson. You know, <laughs> hey, it just ain't my cup of tea. Um, so I learned my lesson on that. I do, I will say this though: there are some some young cats that actually flow still. So it's good to see yeah. that. Um, you know, I, I listen to some things, man. I'm like, <laughs> man. Some of it's not bad at all, you know. Right, and right, you, right. You got, but you know, you got your mainstream. Yeah, your mainstream is still, you know, pushing. To me, the mumble and, stuff, and that's the thing. Right. It's pushing the mumble stuff. You yeah, know, there's certain the there's stuff. certain things you listen to, and I'm like, how the fuck did this even get on the 
how yeah how? It's some like, of it, some of it's terrible, it like but... it like you hear it and you're just like okay but but there's a good beat i mean you still yeah. there's still a respect there like you said because you are still doing your thing regardless of what people think about you, you still have to do. And, and that right there alone takes so much courage to do and to right. just just get out there yeah. and do and not care what right. people think and not let it affect you because in the world of social media everybody has a fucking opinion right. Everybody, sure. There's everybody people out there that just that yeah. will literally yeah. make they'll, they'll fake accounts just to troll quick. you, right. yeah. you know, <laughs> and, and yeah. like like my son, he he's an artist and I have to give him some props. We literally when we go places and the other day, I looked over, <laughs> he carries a dictionary with him when I'm doing stuff and he's looking through mm -hmm. the Webster dictionary and mm -hmm. he's just educating himself on words and wow. different things. And yeah. Nice and, it, it, and, and I'm, I'm just like, wow, that's awesome. Because I love to hear him flow because he actually tells a story. And when he puts different words with other things, I'm like, man, that was dope as shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that was fresh. Right. How did you yeah, even make like, that vibe? Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, but everybody has opinion. You can't let it. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is some folks though you know it, it, you know it's been lost in the sauce because the urban radio is not playing it but there are some young casters yeah. out here that's actually flowing and then when you sit up and you listen to them um you know hey you be like man I, this kid is good like how come yeah. they're not how come they're not pushing this guy this guy's good and right. there's right. a couple of them um and, and you know, you know not, and <laughs> yeah not, that's pretty not, much not it. to cut, cut mm -hmm. you off but like you know the thing like uh, you know, before I, My, Michael, we just had him on uh, a couple shows ago. Mm -hmm. uh, Mike Half, Michael Hatfield, and Trey Nova, they're, they're like, you know, they're doing something for, uh, you know, for yeah. some, some, some. Uh, say it again, Dre. Rap artist. Yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. You know, they're, they're, they're like yeah. having a competition and doing things like that. There was a lot of things like that back in the day. And it's like now it's like people don't care because of the social media. Oh no, they can just send it to there. They can you just know, do it there. My you know son I mean? had and a my son had a good point the other day that kind start, of pertained man. to that. Um he said, even though all of the shows have stopped and the pandemic has really changed a lot of stuff, he said it did though give the underground people and people who weren't being heard a little bit yeah. more of a platform instead of the top 20 people right, that they're right, always right. playing. That's, you know, like we all love Drake, but how much fucking Drake <laughs> can you listen to? Right. And, yeah. and, yeah. and, 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 and no, listen, no respect to Drake. All respect to him. I'm no, not right, bashing right. him, yeah. but he said that, you know, it, they kind of slowed down that a little bit to be able to give other people a little right. more time to shine because people mm -hmm. are online now and they're, they're looking at other things rather, rather mm -hmm. than just what mainstream is pushing in and certain things like that, because you, right. you know, you got so many commas behind your yep. name, you know, and that's so, true. Yeah. And he's yeah. got, he made a great, yeah, he had a great point. All, all the hot people, if you think about it, like they didn't put they had out to sit down. They no, they had to nothing, sit down for a minute. But you, but, but, yeah. but somebody, it gave, it gave, you know, it it, it balanced. Yeah, it, it leveled balanced it so that the underdogs could pop up and it gave say, them a fighting chance. Is what it did. <laughs> but that's yeah, you know, you know, even good. even these cats today, though, Dre, they they making it easier to 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 for oh, I, I don't I, again, I'll never bash them, but they make it easier because if you listen to them, a lot of them don't even consider themselves rappers. They call themselves no. rock stars. Rock right. stars. I don't yeah. know where that's coming from, but they call themselves rock stars. I'm like. <laughs> Rock star, like well, they get. I mean, I'm my, not a rock star. Maybe, you know, get, you know they get like different than what you guys. A rock star from my era was Motley Crue. They get like yeah, five thousand, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. they get like, like that's the thing. They get like five thousand followers, yeah, and they they're a rock star. So it's like you they're know, rock star. Or, or, they're or, they're yeah. rock star. <laughs> even so, even when Kid Rock, even when Kid Rock thought, even when Kid Rock thought he was a rapper, he still switched it up and said, "I'm a rapper, a rock star." When he thought fake famous, like like we just right. watched. I don't know if you ever you uh, check that out. Uh, it's on Sean. HBO. It's on HBO. It's called Fake Famous. <laughs> but okay, you know, I ain't seen that yet. Yeah, yeah it just it, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. <laughs> Watch it. It's based on three characters to see if they could make them famous through social media, and they were successful. Uh, okay, it's pretty cool. <laughs> well, it, it doesn't take you know. Um, social media can make anybody fa famous. To be honest with you. You all yeah. you need is a viral. All you need is a viral hit. And then you pay. Right. I mean, you you're out there. You know, <laughs> that's cool viral hits, and, crazy, and there you man. go. Um, mm -hmm. But I will say that, Drake. You know, this one cat. I, the name. I, I'm. Um, <laughs> the name. I can't. I can't think of the name. Guy name, man. But you know, if you guys get a chance, he he fused the two, man. He 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 reminds you. He's from. I think he's from Cali. He reminds you of Kendrick a little bit. Okay. But he also, huh? Okay. He but he also, 
but he also raps in Spanish as well. So oh. he'll go back and forth. And, oh, and the kid I love is that. Kid is very, very good, man. And I okay. only found out about him because it was him, Royce, uh, um, oh. God damn, I can't think of the other cat. Two other cats that, that was up on billboards for albums, rap albums of the year. And okay. that's how I, I'm like, okay, so who is these guys? So you know, I heard it's okay. real, but I never heard of this guy. It, it's and, for this year, twenty for twenty twenty for uh, twenty twenty for the end of the year. Okay, they were up for rap album okay. of the year. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna Google his name right now. But the kid, okay. dude, y'all listen to him. He, hold on. When you listen to him, he uh he from Cali. He sounds like Kendrick a little bit, but he also raps in Spanish. And he every song is a story. Yeah, I like Kendrick. I love, cat, I love a young cat that that's not afraid to make a song about the pops. And he does that. Yeah, I love a cat who who father was in their life, and they bring that into a song. Right, and he right. brings yeah. it into a song. Like you know, his father struggled. His father was in jail, ca- incarcerated. He brings it all out. But the way he does it, it has you going. Hey, I, I love that fact that you know you yeah. just didn't, you it know you brought your dad you. back into the mix, man. He out, he's out, and you know his uh his mom's was like, like he was, cause they did a little skit. His mom, she was doing some singing. She, they, they lived off of her. Cause she started singing with Michael Jackson background singer. She had oh, a commercial, wow. a cult commercial where she's oh, singing. Wow. Yeah. So, and they, yeah. he brings that up, you know, and the pops, the dad bring that up, you know? So I was incarcerated. We had to live off of her salary. You know what I'm saying? But I just love the fact that he did that. And, but yeah, I'm going to find the guy name, but the album is nice. Really nice. So oh, nice. Um, yeah. <clears throat> If you get a chance, just check it out. Like I say, all the new stuff ain't garbage because there are some new cats. That, right. that's absolutely, right. absolutely. That's pretty good. Right, and so. I say the same thing, man. I don't never mm-hmm. anybody I talk to about music. I, I you know, <laughs> it gives me a chance to <laughs> to act like I was somebody and say, oh well, I used to DJ. <laughs> I used to DJ, so I don't knock nobody's. Music. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? But I mean, I know a couple I mean, things. And, 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 and one and once again with the Motown. I always bring it up because it's like near and dear to my heart. My my mother has you know oldies from A to Z. Yeah, grew up on the same mm-hmm. thing. My favorite, my 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 father's favorite was Smokey Robinson. So like, my mother was married what, to him. What real real, <laughs> what real music is? Smokey you know is I mean? my stepdaddy. For sure. <laughs> you know oh, what I mean? Lord. Like, so I mean, his you know it, it is what it is. So like, you gotta yeah. something came from always came from something. So you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, but uh, the, yeah, Dre. I for the most part, though, I, you know, I let my I let that generation do what they do. I still, when I get my ride, I still listen to the same. You know, you can go. <laughs> 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 You know, <laughs> I, I I rock the same stuff. I always rock. I've know, been so listening to yeah. playlists all day long at work, man. Yeah, yeah I, from the nineties. You know, it's what I'm comfortable with. Two thousand. <laughs> Yeah, but I would say this though, my music, my music selection as far as genres, I'm all over the place. Um, I don't have, you know, actually, I mean, mostly R, hip hop, R and B, and then jazz. Jazz is real big. Right. My pops, you know, that that carried over right, me too. Right, right. But right. you know, and then from crate digging, from producing, you know, man, I, I love listening to OGs, dude. I, I can't lie, bro. I will put on the old school song in a heartbeat and just break it down because I look at it just so sampling, right? So you think about sampling, like. I like to hear the original song that was that they sampled from because right. my opinion, when you listen to a sample, you can chop. You're like, oh, that 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 hook sound good, or that riff sound good, and you sample it and you turn it to your own thing. You make it hip hop, right? But I like to sit back and like, man, what made that? What was he smoking or sniffing? <laughs> what made him say that line like, right there? Right? Yeah, I used to sit. Listen, I, I never really smoked much. I never really smoked, but I used to remember sitting. Way back in the day when I had my studio and stuff, I remember saying I had this big ass fish tank, right? And so I used to sit there with me some Hennessy. I would have I would have eat some Hennessy or Remy and I was sitting from the big ass oh, fish tank and turn off all the lights and yeah. grab me a black and just sit there and shit, watch man. the fish and listen uh, to these I, old cats. I feel play. attacked because I had the same fish tank. And I would be like, man, That's what dope. you know, some of the stories I remember going to this one studio, right? So you know a lot of the <clears> stuff <throat> that, that was sampled was recorded right here in Detroit. Even though okay. you know a lot of people don't talk about United Sound, you know United yeah, Sounds. No, they don't know that. and all that was recorded, and that's right, right here in Detroit too. You know we talk about Motown, but you got another historic uh, right. uh, recording was studio United right artists? here called United yeah. Sound. Was it United yeah. Sound? Okay. United Sound. Actually, the city about a year head. or so ago, the city was about to tear it down, and um, I think it was Boosie Collins and other artists got together and paid back taxes on it to try to turn right. it into a museum. 
because the pictures they show, it still had some of the old equipment still in there. And oh, nobody wow. talks about it. But you talk about that funk era, a lot of those songs were recorded, more bounce to ounce, all that was recorded right there on United Sounds, which is in Detroit. And yeah. so, you know, and a lot of people don't talk about that. So, you know, I used to sit back and just listen to that shit. And we went to, we used to go to the studio, and at the studio, they had the biggest, they had a regular soundproof room. You know, when you go in and do right. your lyrics, most lyrics, soundproof rooms are not that big. Man, this soundproof room was like a garage. It was huge. Right. And I was like, who wow. needs that much space? For like a band. For, right. He, I was like, who yeah. needs that much space to record a song? Like, you know, that's too much room. And my man told me the story. He's <laughs> like, nah, man, you just have Damn. Funkadelic, right? So Funkadelic Parliament and George Clinton, they just come in there. And that's wow. why the song was so long. They would just uh, hit record. <laughs> and the whole boy, he said they would come in there with Maxwell that's House. Shit. Uh, empty Maxwell Huff co coffee uh, containers full of cocaine. Oh, and they would yeah. go in that studio with and those Maxwell being cocaine. Being there for like four, and four days. And, just start playing. Mm. and they oh, just and just vibing. And oh, shit. Record. And them songs be long. That's why. And they now just this makes playing. so much fucking sense. So, much. <laughs> like, so Boosie Collins once said, this is why I say for new artists, right? You just think about how deep this right. is. Boosie right. Collins once said, that when he played, he would be so high. When he played his bass, he thought he was making love to it. Right. Oh, I, I remember. I heard that. So, so how that. do you how do you think about that? The mindset. This cat think he making love to it as he's playing it. Most cats just get there and play. And how do go. you do that? And so, like to me, that's how I look at shit. I want to get on turn and think I'm making love to you. <laughs> like, I, I, that. You know what I'm I can get funky well, hey, hell with that. Like I right. said, like I said, when I was when I was standing to the side at GI four and watching you scratch, man, that's what I, I I was just looking at it like he was oh making God. love. He was watching you make that's love. That's what you was doing because I was like, <laughs> oh my God. I, it was like your hand wasn't moving. Your hand wasn't moving, but as long as you the needle, as long as you were the needle, as long as you were the needle. It's not the size of the needle, it's how you use it, right? Oh, okay. the needle. There you go. That was uh, actually, there was a guy that was in the DNC. He was called Juan. I don't know what year he yeah, was. Yeah, yes, he I remember that. Needle. You remember that? He used to lick the needle. He used to lick the needle. I remember that. And because yeah. he was a wild, he was a wild, right. like hippie. He was yeah, yeah. I had to with him before. He had the long, yeah, he was damn good too. He that's yeah, we yeah. did a show in Cleveland. Just don't forget uh, to lick the needle. Yeah, he took the needle. That's that, yeah, yeah. I remember that. Right, right. I remember that like, oh, you know what I'm saying? Well, I know it's getting late for you, and I know you gotta be up <laughs> things before we go. Uh Pistons. I know we had that, that conversation. What's your right. thought about the Pistons? I mean, yeah. They're 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 shitty, but they're 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 okay. But you made a huge statement to me mm -hmm. on the phone. You were saying, "Look, the Pistons ain't going anywhere until they get rid of the owner." Yeah. Tell, yep. tell me the conversation because I, I was I, right. Yeah, uh, you know, yeah. you know, in today's day and time, um, he's been linked to uh, prisons. <laughs> you know what right. I'm saying? So yeah. he's been linked to having investment. You know, and if you watch what's that movie on Netflix, Thirteen or whatever it is, something like that, he's been linked to to heard about that, a lot of his man. money it's come crazy. from it's prison crazy. profit. So, right. and then you got to look about who's in prison. So you're looking at all mm -hmm. the minorities in prison, but yet you have a minority. You you have, own a team Same. that's predominantly minorities, but yet you got a lot of money that's coming in from prisons. You know what I'm saying? That's, so the, there was a call for him to separate himself from that, and he still hasn't to a certain degree. Mm. He might try to get. Right, but he still hasn't because he right. makes a hell of a profit off of it. Right. So, you know, to me, from that point on, you're not going to really be get the following. You're not going to have the support until that right. is done. And especially I think in a city point, like Detroit, <laughs> yeah, I was just going to say, in, like in of all the cities, <laughs> in, in all the cities, and, yeah. that's not going to fly, yeah. man. And it's I think he tried, to, he tried to sweep it up under the rug, but it's out. It's yeah. out. You know, and once and, that happens, yeah. you know, we turn against you. And yeah, it's, no. it's funny because mm -hmm. of the way. He just comes out every, you know, when, when they were winning, you yeah. know, even though they weren't going to go nowhere, but they were winning like 30 games or whatever, he would poke his head out and act like he is, you know, got to show his face. I mean, he, he was one of the, he, he seemed like he was one of them type of guys. And I heard a lot of bad things about him, too. And just yeah. nobody likes him in radio, you know, in the papers huh. or none, none of that. And it's, it's and, and and it's well, slowly, if you can monetize off of people so. in the prison system, I mean, 
that alone speaks up volume on your character. You know, yes. So, so shout out, I mean, shout out to Mike Valeni. Fuck that guy. Mike Valeni has, <laughs> has basically said the same thing. Like he just, he's called him out on it. And he, from yeah, day that, one, that right he's like, this guy comes out wearing his shirt mm -hmm. unbuttoned and he's just, you know, like, like he has, he knows yeah. absolutely nothing about, about basketball. He sounds like a Ralph. A Ralph. <laughs> Ralph <laughs> money, right? Fucking dick. <laughs> Sounds like a dick. I mean, you're Fuck not Ralph. Just, uh, Damn, Ralph. That's <laughs> funny. I had to think about it for a hot second. Hey. <laughs> well, not people are going to be not going to support him, but also, you know, players are probably hope, don't want to I hear hope he's watching, bro. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that. But Think about think about uh who was that uh, Harden and them, how they that they they went with with Houston because right. owner you know what I'm saying? oh so you yeah. got oh, yeah, as yeah. we as we talked about it as we said Drake as, as a DJ you you got to learn how to read the crowd and right. I think uh, sometimes owners get very very cocky um not realizing who their crowd is you know what I'm saying right you know and, and once you yeah. once you start alienating your crowd which is your customer base <clears throat> I mean you got to think about the product you have on the floor. The product you have on the floor is mostly minorities, but yet you take an advantage or you, you for the most part, treat the minorities as if they're nothing. And then you expect them to want to play for you or make you right. deal with you. You know what I'm saying? And you're yeah. going to have that right. at some right. point. You got some players right. that's all about the money, but you got some players that's like, man, the hell with this guy, dude. I, right. I ain't, you know, I'm bigger than that. You know, you, sure. you do have right. those players out there. And I think yeah. if you look at from, from Houston, what happened in Houston and all that, you know, I mm -hmm. think. Honestly, when that came out with the prisons, and you know how we are with prisons, yeah. man, how unfair that system is and the justice system is. When listen, if you got ties in that prison, bro, you, to me, you one of the worst people that can because yep. you profit in front of it. So yep. you know you gotta you gotta look at it. You know, prisons are a business. You know, and that's the right. way it is. They comp they comp numbers just like everybody else, right. every other mm -hmm. business. And, and mm -hmm. that's that, that's like I always say, we never know. You know, when I talk about sports so much, I was like, you know what? Yeah. Like I can only talk so much about my opinion and, and the facts, but you know, once I, once again, we don't know what happens. Behind There's so much doors, more behind you know? the scenes. Mm -hmm. You just never know, and, and and that's why that could be one of the reasons why it's been a revolving door for for them for even even head coaches. I mean, you know, like you Larry said, Brown, what player Carla, wants to I mean, play? For somebody who is doing that to their people, and and, 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 and nobody, right. nobody, and you see, nobody. and you see when these teams win championships, you see yeah. when they win championships, right? You see how much of a team that they actually are, and yep. they're crying and they're hugging each other. That shit is not fake, at least in my nope. opinion. You know no. what I mean? No, Especially not. during the COVID, you know. Yep. So, but there comes a point where you have to stand up and not be a puppet to these people that do this. And, and, I, and that's what it is. Especially like you say in basketball, you know, basketball. Yeah. Is if you look at the percentages and the demographics for that, basketball is the last sport you can be involved mm -hmm. in something like that. Shit, you look at the cat, who was that cat, the old Golden State or whoever it was, whatever right. California team that said all the shit when he got drunk. You, you can't, you can't be in that, <laughs> right. that, that realm right. and think, you know, you know, you just can't. And I think the right. problem with them, you, you know, know besides the wrong, right. wrong loss record, and, I just think you're going to have that inconsistency. Uh, and I don't think the city is really going to fall behind Gores because. Even if they do start winning, the media is going to bring up that every day. They're going to pick it right back yeah. up. And, and and mind you. Off if they're like, hey, we're no, with them, we're not, winning no. with them, we can win without yeah. them probably. So, I yeah, mean, so mm -hmm. I just think, I think uh, you know, <laughs> I think that's, that has a huge part, you know. Yeah, but absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with you. And, and you're not the first yeah. person I heard bring him up. But, Great perspective. But, it but, absolutely uh, has a lot to do with it. But it's that. been a while since I heard, you know, anybody anybody bring him up. And I and and yeah, like I said, you, you barely see him. You don't see him at no conferences no. like 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 Dan Campbell. You're gonna see him and like, uh, like there there was a story two days ago. Dan Campbell went into the gas station to get gas, and the guy guy uh, the gas station attendant asked him why how could you trade Stafford? And he <laughs> sat there and he had a conversation with him. Like Damn. a full blown out conversation, so wow. like people are gonna love, and that's why I, I one of my first posts on Facebook, I was like, people are gonna love Dan Campbell. They're just gonna, they're gonna yeah. love him. They're gonna love the, the rawness, right? Raw, right, right. And, and well, that's you the know. difference between solid gold and gold plated, <laughs> right? Right, <laughs> right, right. 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 And just yeah. win and, and bring some mm -hmm. winning here a little bit, and and. Man, well, I don't know how long we're gonna have to wait they, for that. They might make a statue of him, man. <laughs> yeah, that, that right there, you know, that's that's wishful thinking. I mean, I, oh, I you sure. know what? 
first. I like what they. I like what the Lions have done. As far right. as go for the coaching staff and what they're putting together, yeah. I, I like it. Uh, I was never. I'm being one hundred with you. I right. was never a fan of that whole Patriots way shit. I, <laughs> that that was, a, was always a turn off for me. I'm like, man, what what is that? You can't have the Patriot way if you don't. God have bless time. you for even saying that. If man. you didn't and get it, it. I mean, <laughs> right? He just proved that, right? That wasn't God that just proof? Yeah. Yes. No yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Brady way. That's what it is. So right. that Patriot way shit. That, I never was a fan of that. Uh, and it started I, I with. It. And it started mm -hmm. back with like Charlie Wiseman, remember when he was the yeah. first one that left, went to Notre Dame and got a big time, like ridiculous. Uh, and did, what did he do? Yeah. And, and I haven't seen him since. Was That's it two thousand? If you look at, you look at all the <laughs> that left there, none of them really, you know, had. I mean, great success. I mean, so. Right. That right there, I just look at it. Listen, man, as I was saying earlier, you can only have one Tupac, <sighs> only have one Biggie, one right. Jay. Right. You can't right. have another right. Patriot. It just don't no. exist. Right. Or you, you, know, you or got to be like a big pun and you just got to create some create. shit. Well, see, not only <laughs> create. Well, see, they, with, they with, were with, only with, damn near trade uh, with the Patriots. I mean, right, they, right. They, they, anybody that left the yeah. Patriots a lot. Yeah. I mean, they did, man. you know, <laughs> that, you know guys, they like, did. I got to, to where it was out of hand. Them in Tampa Bay, it was ridiculous. Like, Jesus, yeah, it was, it was like something that we don't know. <laughs> so we just. We just talked about Big Pun, but uh, the passing of, uh, I know we talked about it on the last show. Um, what was your thought when Prince Marky D passed? I mean, we we kind of, we, we touched on it. Uh, you grew up in the 80s listening to the Fat Boys. Um, I was never a fan of the Fat Boys. It just, I thought it was, they were comedians and, you know what I mean? The whole Beastie Boys. I was never a fan. They were kind of like Will Smith yeah. before Will Smith. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> But the afterthought of what you he come did, for Will Smith. Yeah. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> Don't you come for him. <laughs> that he did with writing, writing, producing, I thought actually went unnoticed. Um, yeah. And so what was your thoughts of him passing? I'm definitely so young. Uh, um, yeah. I, I mean, we just, we just the same age. I mean, you know, me and Mark D were the same age for the, for the most part. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I always, I always, I looked at the Fat Bears boys like you as being as, as um, thank you, Don. But I remember them right. being comedian as well, and then it became Hollywood because they were something you can market. Um, right. But I always yeah. looked at Buff, not Buff, but I always looked at Marky D as actually having skills. Right. Um, and and Kura sure. as actually having skills. Yeah. They actually both could actually flow. Um, right. I just watched the piece that Kura did, and he's talking about it, and you know you will see. The talent they had, it wasn't that became. I think they played with that gimmick. Record label saw something <laughs> they can market, For and they sure. started right. pushing what they can market because For they didn't sure. call yeah. themselves the Fat Boys. Right. After, yeah, as, as two two said, or three. They stand right. They couldn't stand the name Fat Boys. Right, but right. label looked at that as something they could market, and so they marketed that, and that's what they did. Mm -hmm. So they played. Right. They did what they had to do, but right. they actually were rappers. They were actually MC. So I always looked up. I always thought Marky D was pretty right. tight. Actually, to be honest yeah. with you. You know, I love it. I actually like the Fat Boys. To be honest, and he went solo. I did too. You no, know, he I went did. solo. He went solo, and he went and, solo. That's correct. He had a couple. You know, it was kind of like a like LL Coolish a little bit. Yeah, but he was because you know, that's that's how he was though. Yeah, he you was. Know, he was but Puerto he was Rican, at the same so. time. He was humorous at the same time. And he, you right, know, and they did. Right, had, right. Like to me, some of the bass lines on this shit was incredible because I think Jill has house rap was. Incredible. Oh, classic. Yeah, classic. that's a classic. You know, you, sure. you know, you can't even forget their 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 version of I Need Love. That falling. Oh, yeah. Love. Yeah. I, mean, yeah. I, I was at work listening to that. Him, I was at work Yeah, that was banging. Like, mm -hmm. So yeah, it you was was it. Yeah. You just gave me goosebumps with that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were doing their thing. So you know, I always did like the fat boys, man. I think that like I say the, the whole uh marketing of them right. turned into Hollywood. Uh, I wasn't a big fan when they started doing the remakes of like like uh what's that the James Brown and the yeah, one yeah, the, yeah. Louis, Louis, the, the Beach Boys. Boys. I wasn't a big fan of yeah. those. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. but when they were strictly before they became Hollywood, I, I did like the, some of the stuff they did. Right. Um you know when they were backed and, by the drug dealers still. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, and then they, they you know and then same way right. with, with next yeah, that was but you know what stuff, yeah. it, it, and that's exactly they did exactly what the Beastie Boys didn't do. Yeah. Yeah. After that, they were like, "We're we want to do our own thing," and they and then it took them like 
seven years to even start being relevant again. And that that documentary was uh that that one was pretty good. Uh mm. it was pretty great. And and I didn't know I didn't know that that they, you know, they got let go. Uh oh, by wow. them, you know, Russ Simmons and were like, look, you gotta, you gotta <laughs> Like we want to market you like this, and and you know, right. and they didn't want to, they didn't want to do, do that. that. So yeah, they didn't want to do that, and that's why they veered off. And I was like, wow, yeah. I was blown away by that. But and again, it takes a lot of courage to stand up for what you believe right. in, and what you want right. to do, and what yeah. you don't want yeah. to do as an artist. And they went through knowing that the backlash could be, you know, to get back to the, your career. <laughs> call it now. Today's right. term you call it the Dave Chappelle because Dave Chappelle yep. like, no, fuck that, I'm not doing that. Yes, right, and now look. He and now look at back. him. Now he got yep. his stuff back, right? No, yep. So, and he's yep. coming back. That's Just amazing. Do, mm-hmm. I ain't still, so I'm doing my thing and, you know. You got to respect that. You got to respect that. that. Right. You know. So. Right. right. So last, last question uh, is yep. going to be more statement and last question. Uh, COVID-19 yep. uh, just hit a milestone. We just hit a half a million deaths in the U.S. What's your thoughts and are you going to get the vaccine? Yes. Uh, yes. And yes, I'm gonna get the mm-hmm. vaccine. Um, so I, I will share some stories with you. So, you know, Thank a lot you. of people, uh, don't or didn't <clears throat> necessarily believe you or you got some people don't believe in all that. Listen, I would tell you this in, um, last year for me, it started impacting me. You know, I'm born and raised in the city in Detroit. So, uh, it impacted and started hitting home. One of the cats I DJ with like, wholeheartedly um he passed away april 1st from bus driver. Shout, he, shout was bus driver. he was the bus driver that that passed away and i that was i mean that, that was my boy man so yeah. um, Sorry, that man. One home. And, and the thing is i had just talked to him um he had just sent me some files and records because i had to do mm-hmm. as you brought up i had to do a a baby shower for my boy it was for his niece and it's that young mm-hmm. crowd, so I don't have all. I didn't have all that young stuff, so <laughs> right. I, reached out, I, right. I always call him Big Pun. You know what I'm saying? So you gonna hear me relate? Yeah. Uh-huh. His DJ name was Affinity. Actually, Tony actually created his logo for him. Um, oh, nice. So yeah, Tony created his logo, and so I always called him Big Pun because he always reminded me of Big Pun, He's a big fella. <laughs> you know, what I'm right? So yeah. Um, so I reached out to Pun, like, hey, dude, uh, you got some. I know he had it. And he so he sent me the files, man. And Damn. I did that party on March 8th. And then roughly about March 22nd, 23rd, I heard he was. And this before COVID became, you know, right. you heard of it. Right. But that was really it. And right. then I heard he was sick. So I texted <clears> him, <throat> like, how you feeling? He's like, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm a lot better. Shit, man. And then two days later, he was dead. Damn. And I'm like. Damn. And, and, and he was, you know how you have it to where you got some people you kind of anticipate because the lifestyle they live. Right. You know, right. Wild, right. So you kind of anticipate some shit. Man, Pond was, that was the last person you would expect. Like, dude, right. this cat, now, not him. Doesn't not that him. piss you off when people are like, oh, it's fake or don't do this. And, and then I, 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 it, it, I, I, it's just, it's like, it's like a slap in the face to your friend. I, 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 right. Yeah. And as I tell people, you know, that was the, that was the, that was, I lost a worker the same day. So oh, you know, my worker passed away the same, same day. I'm well, they found, so him, they found him at the house. Um, but that was the same day, April 1st that they both, so that was two at one time. But then from, from April to August, man, I, I had eight people pass. I mean, my, my yeah. sister-in-law died from it. My aunt mm. died from it. And my aunt never even left the fucking house, man. She was, right. I would give, I would bring stuff to her son. Her son would take it there. But she ended up getting an infection and he had to take it to the hospital. And in the hospital, she ended up contracting it. And she passed oh, from it. Man. In so in that time frame, I mean, shit, I lost three classmates from it. Um, I don't know. I know you guys heard about... Uh, by Mike that used to work at uh, Record Time passed from it, so yeah. it just yeah. uh, it, it was back to back to back. You you know yeah. I've never I've never experienced where I start feeling like I was immune <laughs> to that because before you could grieve one, there was another one. There was another, and another one. one and another yeah. one. I mean, I got yeah. to point, dude. I was afraid to oh even open yeah. up my Facebook page because every time yeah. I opened it up, yeah. it was somebody else. A uh, young lady <clears> grew up <throat> down the street from me. I sent my condolences to her dad. Her dad died, I think, on April no. June 9th or April April 9th. And I I sent my con no April eleventh. And I sent my condolences to her. And then she died nine days later. She didn't even know she died oh nine days later. And it was like, man, this so for me, it hit yeah. home totally different. And I and I tell people, you know, sometimes oh, you know, surprised by 
that milestone? Are you surprised that we hit that half a million? No, I'm not. I'm not, honestly, no. I'm not. I'm not because I think we 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 too many folks don't believe, and to this They're day, too many folks don't believe. Too many folks think it's a conspiracy. Mm -hmm. um, and from that, you know, like some people just will not well, take. Well, well, you have to keep in mind we had a leader, a leader that was telling people that it was a conspiracy and for so That's long true. and for so long gaslighting people and making everybody think they're crazy. And it really, while, mm -hmm. while you're watching people fucking die, like here in Arizona, all my family's back home in Detroit, but here in Arizona, nobody was wearing a mask when I'm looking on my timeline and people are in the hospital, they're dying. My, yeah. Both my parents happened, have it, had it. So many family members have had it or lost a loved one and couldn't be there with them. And I'm like, what the fuck? we're on the same planet. How are the people right. here not yeah. respecting, you know, even if it didn't affect you, even if I never saw one person pass from it, it didn't affect my family, my friends and none of that. It's a form of respect for human life to yeah. go ahead and take these precautions and to do whatever you can to try to stop the spread instead of being so rude and ignorant right. and downright fucking I mean, selfish. I mean, Dude. he got it. You know, Dre got it. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I got scared, man. I was, I was like really scared. I was praying for everybody and praying for him, and I was like, oh my gosh, you know, when you he know, came down. And, and there's still like, people that don't believe it. I know, and I, 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 so I'm that type of person. Like I say, reading crowd, I'm that first type of person. I like to peel back the layers on shit. So, yep. So when they come at me with a conspiracy, let's peel back the layers. So what's let's, the let's talk about it? Right. Mm -hmm. So you, what's the conspiracy? All right. So they say wear a mask. What's the conspiracy with wearing a mask? I'm, I'm just curious. Now, if the government say you have to wear the mask that we create, that's the only mask that you can wear, then I would agree to your conspiracy. But they say there you can go, go grab your own damn scarf out your own drawer and just wear that. Yep. So where's the conspiracy <laughs> right. with that? And let's say. Let's where's the way. infringement on your freedom by putting on a mask to well, help save on, the on your own of damn mask. Not, oh, not yeah, one that no. we're making you buy. Exactly. Us. Exactly. <laughs> you will get a fucking sock out your drawer and tie mm -hmm. around right, your right. Well, then but, they try to say the 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 health issue that it's going to affect you and that it's going to be you're going to make sick. Well, doctors, nail techs, all types of China, they've been all wearing masks for how long? You don't see people dying from that. And I asked so, the question. So, it, it just, what yeah. is the conspiracy? So, what does a right. person, if it's a conspiracy, peel back the layers? What have they gained from you wearing a mask? Just out of curiosity. Like, mm -hmm. if it's a joke, oh, you got a bunch of one percent. <laughs> oh, look at it, we got these stupid motherfuckers wearing masks. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> right. I mean, what's the big deal with that? I, I never right. understood that. Like, okay, so, and then yep. they say, well, same with the vaccine. <clears throat> well, it's gonna give you all you, you know, them shots. You know, what I'm saying then they got all you, and, and so let's peel back the layers. So the shot, what is the shot gonna do? Like they, they, well, they're putting shit in there that's gonna do <clears throat> this and gonna do that. Okay, so don't they already do that with the fucking <clears throat> food you eat? I mean, so like, why would they have to put it in a shot? Couldn't they just put it in your food if they wanted to do it? You're already buying all this shit with all the junk in it. <laughs> or your water. Half the labels, half the people that stand in conspiracy. Right. Tell them to pick up a That's a good point. That's a good point. They tell them to read the ingredients. They so wanted to poison you. you. They, they would announce the right. first ingredient. Uh, it had. So why would <laughs> you need to do that? <laughs> right. Give it to you, you dumb motherfucker. And then overthinking <laughs> it. <laughs> The, the Overthinking right? <laughs> and then they say, you know, the one that always get me. So they talk about all these like goofy ass chips and all this shit they can put in it to follow you. Right. Okay. Put it in let's hot break Cheetos. That. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's break that down. So they need to put a chip in you to follow you. You think so you use your phone. own you your own mouth. They put it in the phone, you dumb motherfucker, and you can't put that down. <laughs> okay, all the time. <laughs> You literally are carrying a tracker with you at all did. fucking times. You're tethered. In the, right, the hand same tethered, thing, right, it cannot right, put right. your phone down. Cannot. <laughs> so, so I think it was That's 2004. And they got the and they got the they got the Alexas around their house too, listening to yeah, that. Like, like my kids. Right, right. So, so that's why I'm curious. So, so do you, I don't know if y'all know this. I think it was 2000, early 2000s, I believe it was that cell phones. The, the by law, every manufacturer had to make sure that every cell phone had GPS that yeah. none of us can turn off. None of them. We can't even turn yeah. it off. Mm -mm. Think about that. But they you need to turn off the location, but it's still in there. Yeah. You but think they need to put a track on you. Right. Yep. No, 
they figured out mm-hmm. how you you can just walk around with it yourself. Hey, here I am. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm and and what, right. what's didn't you see smart, smart TVs? Smart like TVs, an antenna. they say smart TVs record you too, even and, when it's off. Well, well, here's the best thing. Damn. So I always say, you know, like the government, right? They say they 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 foil this attack and they foil that attack, right? So how did they foil that attack, mm-hmm. right? So right now you have Alexa and you have Siri. So how in the hell do Siri watch this? How in the hell Siri know I'm about to call? Her? She ain't even on. Watch this. Hey Siri. She wakes up. Hello. You're like, wait a minute. So you listening to me, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything you're talking about is already listening to you. I was telling them oh, that the other day. Man. I bought those those minis, and my kids won't let me plug oh. them into the house. And then they're like, no, everybody's listening to you. And but it's true. <laughs> or just like, and I know we've all experienced it. We go and we say one thing to each other. And I bet you when I hang up, when we get off of this, my phone picked up everything we said, and everything in my phone's gonna pop up advertisements for things we spoke about. But I think I think Damn. they get way more they get way White more cats. Completely. Hey, hey, they, 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 have figured, they have figured some stuff out, though. I'm gonna tell you, though. They, you're right, because you missing some stuff. And next thing you know, it pops up on your timeline. Boom. Like, hey, how did they know right. that? How did you the know I was day, looking this, for rug? Hey, it's crazy. This, the other day, this is no lie. This is no exaggeration. I told my girl this too. We were talking. She, we were at the house, and we were talking about uh, mm-hmm. there's there's something she wants me to create. And I said, well, just tell me the font you want, and I'll create it. And so. I'm sitting at the house, and in my head, I was like, oh, yeah, she never did. I, I didn't say it out loud. It's just me. I was like, oh, yeah, she right. never did tell me what font she wanted. I open up my email, and it's an email about fonts. I'm like, oh, you got to be That happened to me. Fun. That happened to me two about weeks fonts. ago. Yep. Fonts of all things. Yep. I was yep. like, nah, look, look, somebody's at his door. Out loud. <laughs> someone's at his door. <laughs> 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 yeah, I just said it out loud. I'm like, now, nah, how in the hell right, did they right. know? Yes. That's crazy though, uh-huh. right? You know, so it must mm-hmm. be that chip they implanted in my head sometimes. Something. It's something. So, it really anyway. is. It's that brainwave. Yeah, I, they, yeah right. I'm gonna take it. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna take it for different reasons. Like I don't. I what I look at it like this. You know, I actually I got a letter um, back in November to actually take it, and it was actually uh, because. Two years ago, I had something happen to me, so I had to have major surgery out of nowhere. Um, I'm coming back from a flight from Denver. I'm on Denver partying like crazy and shit. Never been sick. Nothing ever happened to me. But on the flight home, and I start getting this pain. That pain, next thing you know, had me in the hospital. And then next wow. thing you know, I'm having major surgery. Um, mm. And so from that, uh, I guess from that surgery, they kind of considered me a risk to a certain High degree. Risk. Yeah, so they sent me a letter uh, back in November to take uh, one of them before they were actually passed. Yeah. And yeah. I was all for yeah. doing it. But I, I say, well, you know, it's more than just me. I have kids. I have family members. Right, right. So I'm like, let me get their opinion. Right. So I, I, I asked my girl and she told me, hell no. And so I was like, all right, well, I won't do it. So this, that's her, that's her. Um, you were talking about so, that surgery. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, so let me go to the ultimate. Let me go to the the matriarch of the family. Let me go to my mom. Like, hey, mom, listen, they do that. And she's like, oh, hell no. And I was like, <laughs> no. And, you know, and so you got to remember, my mom yeah, was a senior. Mama said no. She, mama yeah, said and no. she's a senior. And she's from that era was they use blacks as guinea pigs. So right. she's from that era. So for right. her, it was like, right. oh, hell no. I don't trust right. anything that they're giving you. And, and this was before anything was passed and proven. And so I was like, all right, well, I won't do it. You know what I'm saying? And so here it is. Now I'm about to go. You know, I I've, I haven't went to go see my parents in over a year and a half because of COVID. But I, as I told her, I said, yeah. I'm coming to see y'all because what I'm going to wait for, y'all seniors, what I'm going to wait for something to happen to one of y'all and then come right. down there. So at least I can see you now. So I'll be down there Saturday. So I was like, I'm coming down there. I don't care. You know, I'll take a test before I see you, whatever I need to right. do. But I'll be there Saturday. Right. And here Where I am at? in Memphis. They're in Memphis. Oh, okay. So the beauty of it. The beauty of it, my sister sent me a picture of both of them getting their vaccination shots. Oh. <laughs> like, the same person told me, hell no. She said, no. You're like, hey, look what I got. Hell yeah. <laughs> so, I think it's good, a personal though. choice for everybody. I think everybody's yeah. walk of life is different. For me, I'm not completely against it. I am a little leery on certain things. Um, and I feel, I think for me, it's more of a, um, seeing what happens to a few people I know already yeah. got it kind of thing um so but i've always lived a very you know uh, cautious life anyway so I, i'm just trying to make sure i still stay cautious and 
and see what happens with others. But I've met a lot of people recently, especially uh, older people and um, up in age and in and high risk, and they've already gotten the first shot and yeah. and very proud to tell me. And and I, and even though I yes, and even though I'm not completely with it. I mean, because I still am like, okay, let's, I, I don't think there's a conspiracy. I don't think they're putting a fucking chip in me. I just want to know what the side effects are kind of thing, because yeah. I feel like maybe they had this already figured out. I mean, I'm looking at timelines, but anyway, so they, they rushed it or they, they hurried up and did something. Well, and got I kind of think it like this. So either you rushed it and you came up with this, you know, cure or something to divert it. Or you spent time on it, which if you did spend time on it, then makes me think about other things that you have a cure for. And then I start thinking yeah. that way. Yeah. And that's yeah. just the, you know, that um, I have a child that has a terminal illness. So when you think of that, you start thinking, okay, what else do you got a cure for? What? Uh, so yeah. that's the where I come from when I think of that. But when they tell me and they're so proud, I get proud for them because I yeah. feel like it's yeah. just, again, it's a form of respect for human life, yeah. period. Not just your own, but everybody that's, you know, on this planet yeah. that is trying to survive or that right. has lost many right. loved ones. So, right, so before, yeah. before we go, I got to run up here to this to, to the uh, um, outhouse right quick. I'll be right back. OK. My niece. We, just, we thought yeah, someone hey, was uh, knocking at your door because they heard us uh, talking about something on your phone. <laughs> my niece. My niece just. Got what up? What up? What up? This is DJ. DJ. So I wanted to oh, play shit. something. Yeah, uh, your niece just hey, got hey, it. I, I, yeah, she just got it yesterday, and she got it. There's, there, there's, there's a priority list as far as there is. as far as I know, and I, I didn't know that until she told me. And uh, you know, like she was like, you know, my mother could get it. She's uh, well, like, me and Dominic were offered. And over or something. Yeah, well, you know, before Zach's passing, they offered no. him first. But me and Dominic have been offered. And Dom, Dom wants to get it. He's not even really like me. Okay. I'm still like, oh, I don't know. Um, but because we're caregivers, we're what I'm with you. Is. I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, okay. I'm like, I'm still like, mm, right. You know, well, my niece I, is a school. She was a teach. She's a teacher, sure. so that's why. And I was like, oh, okay, I, I forgot. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not knocking people that are getting it. I just, I just want to see. Oh, but, right. but he, oh, because right. because we're certified caregivers, we right. are, we're offered to get it as well. I wanted first. to play. Before you go, man, I really appreciate you coming out, but I wanted to play this real quick and let you bounce. DJ, motherfucker, 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 you know what I'm saying? Thug, 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 Lost Jams and shit, that's how we do it, that's how we reconnect. Hey, yo, it's for a day, for a day, for a day, I know you done heard me folk, but you about to hear it again. Yeah, but 313-560-7849. Oh, yeah, make sure you have it. Revenge, retaliation, get back. Also, check out my man, Fable Insane, formerly of the Outlaw, out shit, in the line of fire, shit's tight, you know what I'm saying? Make sure that shit ain't go. So uh thanks man, thanks for coming on, brother. Right. Thanks for the drink. Didn't even know that existed. Now I do. Yeah, that was so great. Yeah, 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 yeah. dope stories. Yeah, I'm really grateful for for everything that you did for me, man. You like say you introduced me to a family that I don't know nothing about, and to this day, I'm real cool with a lot of folks over there just because of you guys. So Appreciate it, all of that, man. Y'all always been cool with me. So uh, that's what it's going to be, man. Uh, have a good night, man. Yeah, Appreciate hey. it. Yeah, well, thanks, look, for, look, thanks right. for coming well, on. Look, before you go, Sean, I got I got a quick question. As far yeah. as your old school, like like the Tupac, the first CD, like, d- do you still have those available or? or I put them, or, I probably made them digital. I put them on Bandcamp. So, okay. I, I, you know. I did those on like uh, four tracks. So I was sitting here where I found this tape at Drake, the one that I got from you. Actually, the four tape is track. not in here. Anymore. Well, you see what's in here, right? So just to see that again, man. When you gave me, that's, I don't know like where golden ticket. <laughs> I saw the case. I know where I got them from, and you gave right. them to me. But I still have a lot of the old stuff. I put a lot of them, or oh, not a lot of them. I bought the two box on Bandcamp. Put the uh, the booty shake and technos on Bandcamp, right. but the ones <laughs> I, you know, I shake myself, I just still have them. I, I never put those on anything else. Okay, no, I'm, right. I mean, I'm just asking personally because, like, I try, I I try to I try to dig and dig for the Tupac thing because, like, the thing about that tape was we used to rewind it, 
and listen to the <laughs> listen to the beginning again over and he over. He said, "Rewind right. because <laughs> because of, because of you know how you came into it, like the the, yeah. the intro was so dope, and it, it was just yeah. ridiculous. So man, once again, thanks yeah, again. There's a classic. You're on my band camp, so if you ever go to band camp, you're on there. Okay, uh, yeah. You want to plug think- uh, uh, is DJ Motion dot bandcamp <clears throat> dot com, and yeah. I don't know if it comes up. Is that how it comes up? Is that it, it has like forward so slash. I believe okay. that's what it is. I, I don't have it on, but I, I think that's what it is. DJ Motion at Bandcamp.com, something like that. I didn't put yeah. the MF part in there. So, it's some, you know, <laughs> you know like, over the years, I went from DJ Motion to DJ Motherfucking Motion. You know what I'm saying? So, hey, uh, there you go. Because so, hey, you're fucking saying, legendary. That's why. <laughs> okay. Because you're fucking legendary. See, I told you. I there told you. Go. Thank you yeah. for coming on. Uh, I, I love like, it. Yeah, it was awesome. Thank you guys please, for having me, man. Please uh, come no, back and I'll vibe with us some more. Yeah, I'll be tuning in and, and watching you drink because uh, you're doing your thing, man. And let's say I, that's always, you always do that. So um, you always have that talent. So, uh, Maybe we can get in. you to scratch next time. <laughs> yeah, well, we all, yeah, uh, uh, it's uh, sitting right here. Just throwing it out there. Right there right right. Right. I'm just throwing right. it out there, you know. Right. I mean, right. no, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Right. Listen, yeah, 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 you maybe you there. know, oh, maybe, man. maybe next time you come on and do a little, <laughs> a little mix for us. I'm just I, saying. I, I was intro anyway. He asked me to do him an intro a while ago. So yeah, yeah oh, bring, him. bring, bring my fucking motion back. Sure. You know what I'm saying? That's what you sure, say. Man. <laughs> motion. Not again, motherfucking man. motion. <laughs> appreciate it, brother. Much appreciate you for having me, man. Much love, brother. Yep. Oh, All right, safe. Man. God Thanks. bless. Be All right. safe. All right, you Bye-bye. Too. All right. Well, I'm gonna tell you what. He's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, he's great, hey, I love his he's vibe. Great. He's awesome. Hey, many times that we we sat there and. You know, <laughs> Uh, mix at his house, and uh, right. I think so I think I would be, he'd be probably laughing right now. Probably the only Mexican guy allowed at his house. <laughs> right. I remember. I remember when you wanted Listen, first time. It's went okay. There and you yeah. were like, "Oh man, you were like, shit, I just came." You know, I don't even remember that story. But now that he, you know, that he did it, I'm like, I'm trying to remember where I got that tape from. It's crazy. Come man. on, that gotta feel good though to know, and just to that's know that you had that, you played that role in someone's tape, life as much as he played in yours. That's that awesome. tape is so fucking full like, circle. I, I didn't want to get into numbers, but I wanted to ask him how many tapes did he sell, man? Of that first two pot. Well, that, that shit that was fucking conversation even before I even had a talk crazy. show or a radio mm-hmm. station. He, they told me that they were making. I want to say that you know tape. upwards. Fifty to hundred grand in mixtapes. That's how much money they were making. Yeah, and back then, that's, that's a lot. That's, that's like five hundred thousand yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. plus. That's huge. More, more. Yeah, they're, crazy, they're, man. they're making money off of those tapes. So, <clears throat> yeah, much love. I'm glad I got him on the show. Um, mm-hmm. he, Me too. He works a split shift, so didn't know if he was gonna be. If we we didn't know he was gonna be on the show until the last minute. So he. He was having a, he was having a hard time to commit on the time frame. So well, look, man, I'm glad he came on the show. Much love, man. Absolutely. I know, I know. Tori is excited about all the <laughs> entertainment you got on here. <laughs> yeah. I'm, cut, I'm cutting it real close, but you know, I'm cutting it close too. Can, let's let's read through, through it, or we can pay oh, it right. on Saturday. I'll read through it real quick. So we go talked ahead, about go ahead, go ahead. nine. So uh, they're nine and twenty-two. They recently beat the Magic. <laughs> Uh, so I kind mean, of you know, do you know that not to cut you off? You notice I laugh every time you say the record. I can't help it. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta get you a shirt not to cut you off. I can't help it. Can't help it. <laughs> I don't mean it's, 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 I gotta get that one. Uh, never changes though. So uh, Red, Wings, Red Wings keep losing. Uh, I don't know if they they were, they were losing a little while ago, but they were five and thirteen before five thirteen and three uh, before tonight. Let's see if they're losing. I said, let's see if they're losing. If they're losing, I don't know if they are. <laughs> let's assume they are. <laughs> let's assume that they are. I don't know. They're definitely not being fucking legendary. <laughs> they're, not, they're not being that legendary. Definitely not. That's the theme of the show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was trying to look at the score. Scoreboard. Uh, be like Bob Euchre. Ah, who the hell cares? Yeah, fuck it. Right, right, right. 
Wow, that's that yeah. bad. That bad. He said, uh, "Wow," yeah, they lost. as if he this was surprised. Oh, yeah, this wow. loss. Yeah, I'm yeah. Sorry. Came across uh, yeah. my phone. Yeah, and the and the Red Wings, I I can't see the score. It said it was for today. Oh, I didn't today? know if they were playing. I don't think they were yeah. playing today. No, they did. They did lose. I remember them losing. So surprise. Okay, surprise. Well. <laughs> Let's move on to NFL. Uh, Patrick Holmes and uh, Brittany Matthews welcome the first baby girl, Siler Siler Sky. I don't know. He just had his his baby. So uh, say that fine tag fast. Yeah, right. congratulations. Right. He probably wanted that. Yeah. He probably wanted that Super Bowl ring, but yeah, I guess he didn't get it. So he got a baby. Yeah. Yep, he had a baby instead. No, no uh, never mind. Not I'm not gonna say. <laughs> So Dean no, Sanders uh, just got robbed saying in the NFL, he just got robbed. His personal belongings were stolen during a debut game. Uh, I thought it was kind of uh, – Deion Sanders. Yeah, I guess his really? personal yeah, – Maybe it's like wallet or – you know what I mean? iPhone. Mm-hmm. You mean where he went to go coach at, where he's coaching for Jackson's, uh, yeah. Jackson State? Yeah, yeah, yep, yep, Damn. yep. Damn. Personal belongings got stolen. Damn. Got what caught slipping. Wow. He got got. Must yeah, be, must be the money. Damn. You know about that. You know about that. You know about that video right there. Hey, man. must be the money. <laughs> All right, move on to MLB. Detroit uh, agrees to a uh, <laughs> deal with the right-hander Julio. Is it Tejada? I don't know if you saw that uh, update. The head on, hair on. Yeah. Oh yeah, former two. Yeah, I know he's a former All Star. Right, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, he signed with the Angels, and then he had he had got. COVID. I remember he got COVID and uh, he was like 0-4 and, and something, man. Like, he was doing pretty bad, but I don't know. They say that they, you know, A.J. Hinch likes him a lot, whatever, so I don't know. We're just trying to stock up on the bullpen, man. That's for sure. You already know. You know, we always right. usually have a decent bullpen. It's the starting rotation, so yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I'm, I'm excited about the Tigers, though. I think they're going to be a little bit better <laughs> Then most I people so. think I, I really I think they're gonna be a I don't know I don't know they we got we got some talent man some really good talent so I don't I would just have to see I don't want to I mean use the R word I th- again I <laughs> think they're gonna shine more than any of the other Detroit teams so that's right a plus. right next to Michigan no I, I think they're gonna be okay you know and, next and to like, Michigan yeah every year I always hope you know that Miguel, Miguel Cabrera has a has a decent year, you know, like 15 mm-hmm. home runs would be amazing. Like, I mean, but <laughs> he's in great shape. So, you know, I can't wait okay. for baseball. That's for sure. Right. Uh, so another legend uh, passes. Stan Williams, mm-hmm. first big hurt, dies at 84. Um, right. Someone made they just call him Big Daddy too. <laughs> yeah, some <laughs> comment said he was he was the hardest guy to ever hit off. Uh, he was he was impossible to hit off. He was uh, he was a guy that they just didn't like to go up go up against. Uh, I think he played in L.A. played for the yeah, Red Sox. He two, yeah, he won two World Series. Yeah, I'm, I actually might have one of his cards, man. I, I'm pretty sure that I do. Pretty sure I do. Might not be worth yeah, too much, right. but right. Yeah, he was like one of those. Uh, you know, like uh, just like you, you needed. You needed him on your team to win a championship. You know what I mean? Right. He wasn't really like that. I mean, the standout back then, obviously. But, yeah. But, yeah, he was a great player. 14 seasons, two All-Stars, two. Uh... Another legend. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. There you go. We need, to have, we need to have, like, <laughs> a, we need to have, like, on uh, Pee Wee's Playhouse. I remember when they would say this, the the magic the, the the word of the day uh, and shit. Yeah. And everybody would just start screaming. Ah! We need to do so. <laughs> so <laughs> we need to do so, that. We'll jump on over to boxing. I don't know if you caught the uh, Oscar <laughs> Val- Valdez fight. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll bring it up on the screen. Uh, so I knew you. I knew you were gonna bring that one up. You know, <laughs> I'll, I'll, just, I'll just let you play the video. I let the monkeys in the back play the video, and and I just let let everybody let Tori watch it. And mm. right oh, there. Like, oh. look at that left hook! Oh. Oscar Valdez oh. oh. showing fast motion, scoring with ease. Mm. Backs up and it's a technical knockdown. The 
ropes held him up. Yeah, you see the body language from Valdez. Oh, oh my God. Oh, that's the first night. Last night is the one. A left hook, here it comes. Oh, boy. oh, oh, oh there, she go. there she goes. There's the buckle. We talk about spaghetti ladies. We talk about spaghetti body. That was human. Man, that's one of those where you check on him and make sure he's Get not there. Right. And I'm not Beautiful even being set funny. Right, right on the chin. Wow, he walked oh, right into cool. that, man. Oh, Bam, that nice. Too. Long. Lights that was as big as a punch. Lights you will out. see the sport. Let me tell you, what? Valdez, it's money time now. Now it's time to start making big checks. So, right. that, yeah, he walked right into that. That's one of the most that. That's definitely devastating knockout of the year. Yeah. As of now. Mm -hmm. right. I, I mean, that was like uh, Freddie right there. I mean, he just buckled he's, him. He's, that, yeah. that kid, he's really good, though, man. He's like 23-0 and 0 now with that win, I think. But that guy he fought. He only had like a couple losses. He was like thirty something and three or something learn like that. Today. <laughs> but he had 30, 37 and two, thirty-seven and two with like thirty-three knockouts though by KO. But right. there's mm. always somebody better. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was so. So I know we talked about it a little bit with motion. Uh, so U.S. Uh, we're gonna move on to U.S. passes. They uh, a big, big, big <clears throat> half a million. People dead. Wow. Should should we be at this number, or should we be? You, I think this is just too great. No, no. Well, we you, I mean, she number. just. I don't want to say his name any more than he has to be used on on our show. But Tori just well, brought, fucking say what it is. You know, piece of monkey trash up. You know, and yeah, Trump. And I mean, you know what I mean. Anybody now, who tries to say that he didn't that he didn't try to pacify and lie to the American people when he knew mm -hmm. what was happening. And it, and that there's so many people that are supporters of him that think that that action alone didn't <clears throat> aid in this number that we're no. at right now. And that's just I absurd send you, to say that his actions didn't play a role. Right. In this number. I want to send you a podcast maybe when we hang up or something, but I, I just please listen to him. This guy, absolutely. You you will just chip away at it because yeah. it's like Send three hours. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to, I actually wanted to play it on the show a little, like a, a little piece. But this guy is amazing <laughs> when he talks about. If you Donald have Trump somebody, he, if you, if yeah, send it to me. If if you have somebody who's supposed to be the most powerful man, the leader of you God. know of the world. And he's telling people, <clears throat> and, and he says he did it to tell people not to panic. Right. What? No. <laughs> what the he fuck? Talks no, like that's that, just though. some narcissistic right. ass shit. Why wouldn't you be telling people so they can protect themselves and put forth a different effort? When right. you look at the other countries who were honest and forthcoming and look at the difference in how they shut shit down. Right. right. Even the ones that didn't it, shut it wasn't, nothing down. Even the ones like, that didn't, there was no fucking <laughs> denial about lying, it. Like right. whether you want to call it a fucking China flu or whatever you bullshit you want to say, right. it's still real. Death is still real. There's no coming back after you die. Like, right. And for anybody to say that he did not play and a role his in dumb this ass number, gets it. <laughs> you're just as big a piece of shit as him to say that. that he did not on your parade, but uh, I got to be honest with you. This was released the other day, and it was in my notes. Romney yeah. said Trump likely will be the Republican nominee for. Oh yeah, they're getting the bit. They're getting the band back together. <laughs> right, right. So. Fuck it, sorry. Said, Listen, sorry, Pence. We tried to kill you, but we're getting the band back together. Right. No worries. And I think you you actually said that like a couple weeks ago, a few yeah. weeks ago, <laughs> that that yeah. could happen or whatever. But yeah, yeah, we're getting the yeah, we're getting the band back together. <laughs> Purge. Oh, well, I mean, fuck? he didn't. You know, he didn't get. Okay. He didn't get the slap on the hand or slap on the ass or nothing. No slap. So no, you can you can do whatever you want. Freeze the bird. <laughs> So Michael Che call, uh, called all over the Jewish joke. This is what's on the screen now. Oh, man. And SNL critics blast him for anti-Semitic. Let me play this. Wow. Israel is reporting that they vaccinated half of their population. And I'm going to guess it's the Jewish half. <laughs> 
So <laughs> okay, so there's been some outcry. The global advocacy. What was your thoughts on that? Do you think? I mean, it's Saturday Night Live. I mean, it's it's Saturday Night Live. It must be fucking funny. I mean, he wasn't it's Saturday Night Live. Yeah, I don't think he. That's the very first time it made like like shout out to Motion once again. <laughs> Is that the first? Let's peel the <laughs> peel the layers back. Peel the layers back. That's the first the time they ever back. made fun of a Jew on Saturday Night Live. Well, like, you get a, a black, a white, a Mexican. I'm just asking, like, I, I'm so like, would you, the would guy that runs it is a Jewish guy, so he's always run. Saturday okay, night. so did he know he was going to say that? Did you read anything? Well, that did, or did, was that is that ad lib? Because I don't let, know. I don't I'm know. Sure they're not going to tell the truth on Let's that see. because they don't want to place blame on anybody. I don't think Les wants. I don't think he approves every every skit. He whatever. Okay. No, I'm sure. There's so, other people that just, do that. So, oh, hey, I'll tell, tell you what. It's when Saturday ratings, Night Live. And I don't hey, honestly, do you right. think uh, you said he has a problem with it? No, no, I'm saying people oh, got it. Yeah, I honestly, I don't think. I mean, was it tasteful? No. Is Saturday Night Live Social tasteful? media no. had a problem with it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Get the exactly. Fuck out of here, man. Oh, fuck, man. Get the fuck out of here. You know right? what? I listen to, look, real quick. I listen to a wrestling podcast. Uh, forgot the guy's name. Wrestle a lot of big stars like CM Punk, Daniel, Daniel, mm -hmm. Daniel, Daniel Bryan. Uh, I forgot, God, I forgot his you know name. What? You know what? But, I think, that, I think that black guy was wondering, no, he probably was just saying, <laughs> hey, where are the white women at? Damn. Oh, my God. Damn. I, it made me look outside. This shit. I was like, what? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> what the hell? Where's she? What? Who? <laughs> That's what he was talking about. No, but you know what? Mm -hmm. he, he made a good point. The, the wrestler, he, he was talking about being on social media. And he said he's not because he was like, he was like, I feel that, you know, he was like back in the day, you couldn't, you know, like when, <laughs> and he was, I'm going to use the same, uh, you know, uh, quote. Uh, I'm just going to quote him. He, he talked about when, Hulk Hogan got squashed by earthquake. Oh yeah, you're right. like, I couldn't. I couldn't reach out to Hulk Hogan and be like, "Are you okay? Or, you know, are are you, right. are you? You know, are you are you in the hospital? Or how you doing? Whatever." Like you know, so he was like, "I don't reach out to people. I try to not socialize. You know, be on social media like that because that that it makes you less famous and it, and and it doesn't. It, you know, it gives people. It dilutes and, you, know, you. It, it, right. It, there you go. And you it know, they you. lose a lot of respect. You start becoming normal, and so yeah. Dilute. Well, it dilutes they, you. Everybody's word, got an word, opinion. You're word. allowing it to trigger you and to let it affect you, exactly. and whatever your craft is. And so, at that point, you just become one of them. Mm. And yep. And yeah. I thought I just thought that was really, really uh, absolutely. You yeah, you don't hear that. <laughs> so right. You know, in right. regards to Saturday Night Live, cool. it is what it is. Like it's what the show is. It's not a show that is politically correct <laughs> and if and it and and again turn off your tv if you don't like it right all right so we'll move on what to Mal is. malcolm x i know this is still black history month right. uh, black history month so his family claims that there's a new letter that reveals the ny and the fbi conspired in his murder oh, i believe it after all this time they, they got this letter like it's crazy personally i think you yeah they <clears throat> definitely you know, orchestrated and they killed him. But right. absolutely, oh. it is what no it is. No doubt about it. I don't even. No, no doubt about it. That's right. yeah. That's right. crazy. Another, you know, after all these years, the letter now finally surfaces. Right. Another rapper files for divorce. Exhibit files for ex uh, divorce. I hope he doesn't have to pay her two million dollars. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well. Uh, uh, she said, so "Well, I know he, I know he, her. I know he doesn't have drink money, but did you did you hear? He's and I don't got, think he's it, got uh, what was it, the name of his show? Pimp your ride money. Yeah, right. Pimp your there ride. you go. <laughs> um, do you uh no? What is it? West Coast? Cu Wait, what was the was it? Pimp your ride? West Coast Customs. West Coast Customs. Well, yeah, the customs are where he put." He, he decked out your ride, but right. did you hear um, in regards to Dr. Dre? I only heard a little bit of it because I don't know if it's come out yet, but the 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 song he made and he, he bashes yeah. his yeah. wife. Get to it, yep. Yep, yeah. Connor, greedy. Oh, yeah. 
Cheers. Bitch. Mm, I thought I was like, oh shit. Out. It's my he, yeah, gonna, oh, you know what that? I mean that that might that must mean he ain't worried about nothing. Then if he's, <laughs> yeah. I don't think. Yep. Listen, so, I don't, it, then that's why he's getting a divorce because I really don't think he's been worried about nothing. So right, right, crazy. That's what he's saying. So uh, another uh, rapper, Trick Daddy, pleads uh, uh, not guilty after cocaine and DUI arrest. So to go Trick Aww, Daddy. Trick Damn. Daddy. Yeah. He looked ripped. Listen, did you did you see him in that arrest video? No, I wanted to up. look it up, but I didn't. He looked fucked up, but bless yeah. his little heart if he gonna yeah, go. Yeah, like, I don't want to see him like not that. Not guilty. Sucks. No, it's it's no. I always sucks. loved him though. It, it is sucks. what it is. But it's I mean, hopefully he can <clears throat> he can finagle something, come off on some probation or something. <laughs> <Say> finagle. <laughs> finagle. I finagle. I finagle. Finagle it. <laughs> Put that funny. on his shirt. What? The what? Hell? <laughs> Fucking finagle it. Hey man, hey. Uh, that was I'm a good just... show. Thank you, okay. thank you, thank you for getting him on there. Uh, I wish I wasn't as you know. I I woke. I got into it. I kind of woke up and everything. But uh, yeah, that was awesome, man. I damn so many uh. <laughs> Memories and them stories. And I so know, were, yeah. Them stories were like unexpected. Yeah, we gotta have him back. I like <laughs> that interview. Sure, we gotta man. have him back. His vibe yeah, is hey, dope. Yeah, I had, I had to ask him, like, hey, uh, where, where can I get that gold tape, at, man? I should have just asked him, man. I yeah. get some gold at, man. <laughs> or get some gold. I mean, so, I tried, mm-hmm. to, I tried to look up that that Tupac song and type it in every which way possible, and that shit, you can't find it. <laughs> You can find it and good because it, you know, it doesn't deserve to be found and shit, really. Right. You got it. You got it. Whatever. I mean, that's history. So, <clears throat> right. but, uh, Any, anything else for us? Yeah, I do. But if he, he's got to, you got to go. I, I can say I'm with Yeah, we can save it. Uh, you save it. We can save the it. Hell you save it. <laughs> I only had a couple uh, minutes. Go ahead. Go ahead, man. Okay. okay let me whip through it. Whip, whip through it. Uh, Tori's favorite, Courtney uh, Kardashian, oh, is yeah. a <laughs> boyfriend with Travis Barker. Yay! So he's, she's official now. She <laughs> hey. official. Nah, it's funny. We just talked about that, too. That's crazy. It's official. I said it. Scott <laughs> should be pissed. He's fucking dope. <laughs> Lucky. Yeah, he's cool as fuck. <laughs> I want to hang hot, out with them. The that sounds one. fun. He got he the house. <laughs> I mean, yeah, they're all fucking hot, but you know what I'm saying? Money does right. that, so. Hell yeah, I'll take the you're money. Not, listen, yeah. ladies, you're not ugly. You're just broke. It's <laughs> a church. You're not ugly. You're just broke. There's all kinds of guys out there with tattoos, though, so That's help sure. yourself. Yeah. Sure. Help you're not yourself. ugly. You're just broke. You're, you're not ugly, broke. bitch. You're just broke. So, okay, let's talk about broke. Larry King, he will writes up a will two weeks before he dies. And leaves the entire estate to his children, nothing for his ex-wife. You think she's entitled to any of that money? And that no. and then said that she's broke, that he no. only had two million dollars. So and I'm he like, only what? He only had two million dollars. I'm like, That's Larry, a lie. yeah, I was like, Larry Keene only had two million. How many kids did he have? Uh, he had three with her. Then no, there ain't enough to go around, man. How long was he with her? I don't know. I would have to look yeah, that up. I mean, quite a bit. That's key right there. You know what? I think it, I think what's key is what their relationship was after their split and were they amicable and did they co-parent well? And was there a, you know, I think that all plays a role. I mean, if you're a fucking asshole bitch to somebody, don't expect to get shit. Like, did you really fucking deserve <laughs> it now that I died? Bitch, not right. Asshole, that's asshole, the whole, I'm, like. I think that's the first you time. You a I've whole ever heard ass that. bitch. You a asshole bitch. Like that no. Is, you don't that's know. the first time I've ever heard that. I swear. <laughs> hey. You asshole fucking, bitch. I can't wait to you use that on somebody. Bitch. <laughs> so now you an asshole broke bitch. <laughs> Damn. Last uh last three subjects. Clyde Davis, uh famous record producer, album <clears throat> guru, has just been Diagnosed with Bell palsy. My dad had Bell palsy. He got over it, but uh, my grandmother had it as well. Yeah. So um, I don't know. Joke. He's a fan favorite of a lot of people, but uh, I know he had a lot of fucking money. So 
Yeah, you need a lot of therapy to get through that. And some people don't recover and some do. And um, it's scary. You know, all of a sudden, <clears throat> parts of your body just stop working like you had a stroke. Yeah. Your face is drooping and you can't pronunciate that's, things. Uh, and that's it's what scary. Uh, Jim Ross had. Remember, uh, Dre? Right, right. Yep. And, and you mm-hmm. know, one of the, oh, God. I was watching, you know, one of the shows, like I told you guys, you know, I kind of just watch, you know, show as much as I can, little at a time every day. So I, I seen, it was at 98, I think, when he came back. And he wanted to come back so bad. And he was in the ring and he was talking. Mm. I mean, and his jaw was just like, half, it was just so hard to watch him. And, oh, it's, hard, it's hard to watch. Yeah, it's hard to watch. yeah. And, you know, people were making, you know, you know. How uh, that, you know. You know. Um, it was rough, it, and, and it was all, part, make it was all part of the script, you know. But still, right. it but was like down. it was like overdoing it sometimes. Like, oh my gosh, like, right. yeah, that's just kind of overdoing it. I, I kind of fast forward a little bit through that shit, but <laughs> but right. yeah. And he's and and to be the amazing legendary announcer that he is, man, is like that's why I love listening to him. You know what I mean? He's just he's he's a good guy. He, you know, lost his right. wife few years back mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. uh that was like so devastating man to hear you know a couple blocks away from drive driving back home from the gym a couple blocks away got in a car accident and i was just like wow godly so yeah all right but yeah uh, so i digress Jeez. right so, <laughs> got slammed for having a diversity uh training that urged workers to be more or less white did you I did you get it was fake when i first saw it Right. Did you get to see it? Yeah, I saw it. I thought it was some fake. I was like, all right, who did That's this crazy. fake ass shit? Because the, just the thing alone looked generic, like someone fucking right. photoshopped it. I was and like, this ain't some, put a bunch of this shit. Isn't, right. This isn't, this doesn't even look right. But then after reading it and seeing that it was in a training right. uh, video and then seeing their statement, um, the the woman who uh, was head of the training said that she didn't have that edited and it wasn't created by her. Mm-hmm. I just can't believe some of the wording. I mean, wow, like, <laughs> wow, what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? Yeah, All right. And now they're it. trying to say it wasn't mandatory, but the workers are like, no, motherfucker, you told me this was mandatory. This is how we found it. Like, what do you mean? It's not mandatory. And I guess now it's taken down. I don't know. It's fucked up. Wow. <laughs> Cause Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. Yeah, that's, so, uh, yeah, that's nuts. I, I hope that's, that, that's fucking crazy. So hey, tell you what, Tiger Woods gets in a car accident. He looks like he's hurt his leg. And I'll play the video for some people that didn't see it, but. Good morning, I'm Diane Sato. Thanks for streaming with us. In today's update, Johnson Johnson is on the verge of becoming the third vaccine to receive emergency use authorization in the U.S. The single dose vaccine is expected to be authorized into the ground until we get 100 day review. No skid marks, no breaking. Deputies say that Woods seemed lucid and calm. They also say there was no evidence of impairment, but that will be part of the investigation. In that that surgery, doctors doctors inserting a metal rod rod in the gallbladder, which suffered suffered multiple commuted fractures, fractures, meaning his his bones were shattered to splinters. splinters. Screws Screws and pins now stabilizing broken bones in his foot and ankle, and another surgery to relieve dangerous pressure and swelling in his muscles. It's very fortunate that Mr. Woods um, was able to uh, come out of life. Woods had just started to rehab his fifth back operation speaking about his comeback to cbs's jim nance tiger seven weeks from today final round of the masters you're gonna be there god i hope so <laughs> i got to get there first you feel like you a lot of a lot of space on you know, my, my surgeons and uh my doctor. that's what i wanted to talk about is you know that he mm. and then you know boom this accident happened so but did you, uh, okay, so I know that there hasn't been any, you know, nothing released if there was drugs or I don't even know if they're testing for that or what, you know. They said he was that, oh, wasn't no, he's, yeah. They said what? They said he was not impaired. Okay, so, but did you read the part where they said he was just being impatient and rude and took yeah. that off? Yeah. Because he was being impatient and rude and somebody was blocking his right. his space and then what he was agitated. Right. Well, you know, he after watching <laughs> the documentary on him mm-hmm. and 
he was, you know, great talent. He was groomed from a young child, but Tiger Palms has just anger don't go away issues. Like that. He's kind of a dick. So I totally believe that that's what happened. And, you know, right. at his level, he's what? entitled. He's got this entitlement. So I agree what he said. Slow this the is what, down. I agree this is what you. the driver. And uh, this is what his exact words a are. Total douchebag. Damn. <laughs> You know, no, I, sometimes I, I the universe looks I like that, you. and it sat him the fuck down because he's still being a dick. Even though he's had his struggles and things have come, you know, he's right. overcome stuff and he overcame his right, addiction. Right. But now right. think about it. Think about it. He overcame that addiction because he was addicted to pain pills and all the other things that happened. And then he came back. But now he's back in that mode of having the back problems, right? Yeah. So... He's got to be taking something for pain. And I'm not saying that he's being right. addicted. So no, maybe but... he's not addressing the pain as much because he knows right. his, he knows his, you know, so his boundaries. So maybe, listen, when you're in pain, and I'm not something. giving this an excuse, exactly. But when you're in pain and you know your boundaries and what you can and can't do. So maybe he's not masking it like he was because right. he knows it'll push him over the edge. It makes you fucking in a shitty mood. It makes mm -hmm. you right. impatient. Yep, it makes yep. you ornery. It makes you agitated irritated right, whatever the right. fuck it is add that to all that money no matter got. how you slice it right whether he's that? getting high doing it for fun or listen doing it he needs he to do to. some yoga and take his right. ass to some fucking anger management right. classes and chill the fuck out well this is right. the way he sounds all the time i am fucking scorched earth motherfucker i will massacre you damn motherfucker <laughs> no, that sounds like, no that sounds like no that sounds like tom cruise actually but it was I think this was the case. I was think it? this was a case okay. of ego. Oh I think God. this that was <laughs> that was that was from that was from hey, thund thunder or whatever. Yeah, cool, I think I think Tiger Woods bullshit was a case of ego. Right, right. No, I believe you. I agree with you. Yeah, it might be, it might he be, might but hey, he down real to soft spoken, but just but retarded. Focused. I'm not sorry to say that he was just impatient and he just went and, off the hand. That, yeah, and that well, I mean, think about it. How many times have you been behind the wheel and you're pissed off at somebody and oh you wrote God. rage and you're fucking zoom around them? What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> you know, these motherfuckers, and then yeah, you end up fucking hitting the curve or, or no something more. happens, and then you gotta slam on your brakes because you mm, sped right. into something you shouldn't have. And maybe all the impatient stuff is being triggered by the back pain and all the other shit that he's coping with right. because he's not self-medicating like he was. Right. I don't know. Maybe I'm I don't know, but it sounds good to me. <clears throat> Right. Last thing, oh, and we'll I mean, what happens with him though. It's going to be interesting to was, see what uh, happens with him. Yeah, because sure. he's on a sport that you're on. You're standing now. That's a huge part of oh, yeah. is your balance. That so, was the first thing I was thinking about. So yeah, I mean, and and just like you said, feeling good about going out there and actually playing nineteen mm -hmm. holes, eighteen mm -hmm. holes, nine holes, whatever the hell you're. So you got this on holes. top of the back pain that 19, you were trying 18. to hit. He said holes. <laughs> How many holes? Play. How many holes? Damn, as many holes. Well, did, you say, did you say no. hole or holes? Oh, uh, I want to oh, say go holes. blue. They went on. <laughs> they won this weekend. They're fourteen and one. They're still right. ranked number three. They won. Way to go, well, Juwan. They These played are? Iowa. We'll see what's yeah. really up when they play see Iowa. I can't wait to watch that one. Yeah. Matter of fact, I think I don't know if they played them tomorrow or, or or Saturday, but I think it's Saturday. But let me play this video and we can bounce out. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to be legendary. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking legendary, my bad. Hey, peace out, man. Love, much love. Mask up. Love you. Everything love was great. You. For sure. Great show. Love God you. Bless you guys. Love you guys. Yep. Be fucking Have legendary. Night. Have a good night. Yeah. <laughs> DJ motherfucking motion. All right. Good night. Peace.